Und <lacht> uh, good evening, good evening, good evening. We are here to chat about a little known indie flick yeah. called uh, House of the Dragon. An indie flick. <laughs> that fancy ass class Jimmy has. Nah, dude. Oh, let's, let's show it off. No, it's a stemless. Actually, people shit on these because can I swear? I love stemless classes. I mean, you just know you, can, you can can't swear. swear. I have a friend and he's super into drinking and he's like, oh, these are actually garbage because your a hand friend. warms up the drink. I'm like, I don't care. That is true. Yeah, I, I mean, that. he's not wrong, but who cares? But they look cool. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also it's like it's it warms up the drink, but also it won't get knocked over and break yeah. immediately on my table. So true. Which is it, which ruins the wine more. Breaking on the floor or being a little warmer. <laughs> I'll take I'll take the warmer, you know, because they didn't have ice in Westeros. So that welcome to House of the Dragon chat where we discuss wine glasses. Alex, are you still sick? Um, no, I'm sick again. <laughs> <laughs> a repeat. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because my my lovely children. I was making some joke about home like all your the illness, time. Uh... Your illness is like Damon Targaryen. You keep trying to banish it, and it keeps coming it just keeps back. back. Keeps so literally, though, like coming. my, like I still have a cough, like a month and a half later. But I ended up this time around. I had pink eye, and I had a sinus infection. So now, so fart in your I, pillow. I've gotten over that. No, just kids are disgusting, and toddlers get pink eye a lot, and it's all over my children's school. So they just bring stuff home, like presents. Um. It also doesn't help when you yawn and your two-year-old literally coughs directly into the back of your throat. Mm. I'm pretty sure it's a surefire way to get sick. Would you say a black eye is worse than pink eye? Like, which is the worst eye? I mean, pink eye, your eyes just turn pink. Well, I so. think the cure for pink eye is a black eye. You what? just punch it out. I don't think that's <laughs> accurate. Alex, come here. <laughs> I just use drops. So. You got something in your eye there. Let me yeah. get <laughs> You can keep your tongue. <laughs> See what I did there? See how Already, I tried it? All right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> yes, I need a leaching, a good leaching. Mm. Pull all the toxins right out of my body. You don't want to let that thing fester. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I guess based on Alex being sick, he can be Viserys, the stream. Who would you like to be, Jimmy? Um, sh Shit, I'm uh, Craig and Stark, even though he's not in the show yet. <laughs> no, has to be in the show. That's cheating. You can't be like, I'm a super oh, I'm fan of a name of a person that's not in the show. I'm Blackwood. I'm the Blackwood kid who killed the Bracken. He gutted the dude. Which is the most underrated scene in the entire season, by the way. It's such a good Just scene. happens in the background as they're walking away. And it's like such a nod to the hardcores. Like, ah, mm, I loved it so much. I think so. Jimmy's not a character. He's a scene. <laughs> <laughs> I am a yes. scene. <laughs> He's like that's like a, the title of a fallout boy song i'm not a character i'm a scene oh God. <laughs> he's literally the background sword fight that happened as the main character is walking toward the screen i'm okay with that that's, i feel know. like that's, that's a, very a choice thing to be. it's a choice i'll live and die for myself people are in support of this dude the black <laughs> at least one person what, what a feud like just give me that spinoff i know we're gonna do th ten thousand sea snakes or whatever the hell just no, give me the getting duncan egg dude Give me Duncan. And I'm so excited. But you know what oh. we don't want is the Jon Snow show. I dis I disagree a little bit. I, I mean, I it could be good, about but it, like I don't but, care. But you try it, right? Yes, of course I'm gonna I'll watch try it. it. It's like my heroin. Issue, my issue with that show is it's is <laughs> I feel like where like dum dums say that House of the Dragon is like copying Game of Thrones without understanding right why that's dumb is. yeah i feel like the john snow show is gonna be like remember game of thrones like <laughs> but also it's... just the phrase the john snow show but like well, i just can't take it seriously i certainly hope they they workshop that a little bit <laughs> this week on the john snow show <laughs> now my friend matt had a really cool idea uh keeping and, it chill with the snow and he oh, said God. the snow show could snow. be something that includes fagon since they didn't use that, yeah, I in saw the that. Books. I thought that was kind of a cool idea. Which was honestly the first time that I was like, okay, like, I mean, I was gonna watch it anyway because I'm gonna watch it. So, are they it gonna anyway. use it to just like, like okay, okay. fix a bunch of shit that was wrong with the show? I don't. I think that what it is, if being honest, like, I think the exact thing it's gonna be is a very deep character study in the Jon Snow and like what it means to be a hero after the being a hero is done. I think that that's what probably I assume Kit Harrington would go for. So, I don't expect this big grandiose thing. I'm expecting like. Six to eight episode miniseries to tie up his arc. What are they going to Is this supposed to be two seasons? 
I do not know. I haven't heard any fight? numbers. Why are, they mixing it up with something else? are they gonna fight the cold? I, I don't know if it's gonna be. Do you need to do Alex? <laughs> it's Jon Snow. All he can do in that show is fight. I don't know if it'll be so much about fighting as it'll be like, does he have kids? Is Val out over there oh, somewhere? Sure. You know. Um, but are they gonna bring back the White Walkers? No, I don't think so. I don't think. You don't so. think so? I don't think, dude. I. I, I mean, I could be I'm wrong. Like, what's the threat? I'm gonna put money I don't on think it right gonna now that that show's gonna end with some version of like the whites are back or something. I bet. I bet. That would not. Hey, how about this? I said this. Yeah. This show had a high ceiling. I think that the snow show has a deep floor. <laughs> it has a deep basement that it could go into. But I'll, I'll check it out if it comes yeah. out. I mean, why not? If Ryan Condell does it, I have. A he lot might of not. Hope. He doesn't have anything to brood over anymore. Daenerys is dead. <laughs> so now He's he might actually. He's about lines. the fact that he killed her. But now I he mean, might actually have some lines. I don't want it. What I don't do, you want, John? What don't you want? An episodic show with him and Tormund just going around solving waddling issues Hell would be yeah. pretty funny. Oh, it'd but, be like Midsummer Murders, but like, like a buddy cop. Beyond the Wall edition. <laughs> I would be all right with this. <laughs> it's going to be great. So House of the Dragon, the show we're actually here to talk about in theory. <laughs> we'll get to it. Do we want to talk about like our expectations going in, uh, you know, as book readers, seeing trailers, having seen them fuck up on Game of Thrones, like what did we think before we watched episode one? What did we expect? Uh, so I was optimistic and I felt pretty confident it was going to be OK just because of the things that we heard about George, like reviewing the scripts. And I think that they had a chip on the shoulder, like something to prove a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Ryan Condell is awesome. And so is Miguel. So um, I was optimistic. It's it actually uh, exceeded my expectations in a lot of ways oh, because yeah. I was winning a competent show. Like I just needed to be good, like, OK not talking about Emmys and these type of things, but as the season went on, it became very evident that this is like a heavyweight show. This is a heavy yep. hitting show. And in some ways, you know, reflects some of the strongest points of Game of Thrones, but also, at least to me, did its own thing. And, you know, it became must see TV for a lot of people. Like people at my work were talking about this that hated the end of Game of Thrones, swore it off. And it's, it's just nice to actually be able to be happy about an adaptation for once. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much agree. I was cautiously optimistic. Um, there weren't like a ton of red flags about the show specifically, like in a vacuum, like there were for other shows like Wheel of Time or Rings of Power when they before they mm -hmm. aired. Other than we know that Game of Thrones, at least in a lot of people's opinions and mine as well, kind of fell on its face toward the end. But with D&D &D not in charge of it, um, I was optimistic, but cautious. And when I first watched episode one, I immediately felt like I was watching Game of Thrones again. I got that, you know, I captured that feeling again, uh, just the lower stakes, at least to begin with, you know, intimate scenes with characters, politicking, good dialogue. Um, not like I am good, just actual good dialogue. <laughs> and it just everything about it, like the again, back like set designs, costuming, music, Everything Wait, but how could you great. tell who we should root for in House of the Dragon when nobody said I am good? You know what? We'll get to it when we talk about <laughs> colors, okay? But it was just You're great. saying the show mean, is paint by number? <laughs> exactly. It it exceeded my expectations in every way, and most of what I saw like shitting on the show, I just didn't agree with, or I felt like people were kind of poo-pooing it for dumb reasons. Or sometimes, um, like, I'm this sure isn't everyone poo-pooing it, but I certainly feel like there's people that are, like, it's like that that dude that was, like, had his heart broken by some girl, and now every relationship he gets into, he's like, she's just gonna cheat on me, all yeah. women are whores, like, well, like, you're just like, um, <laughs> okay, Game of Thrones did suck, but, like, you don't have to preemptively hate this, right. just to be like, I'm not gonna get fooled again, you can't get me, I can't fall in love with this if I don't try, you know, like Are that. you saying there's a subset of users on Twitter and Reddit that might be incels? I did not say those words. <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, yeah, you know one thing about the nitpicking? Because um, there is stuff, and there, there's some stuff to critique yeah. in this show for sure. But you know what's beautiful is when you don't have to worry about the costume and the set and the design yep, yep. and the overall writing and the performances and the plot because it's all good. It's all gravy. Mm -hmm. And you start taking that stuff for granted. And then we can actually like dive in and say, well, what if they would have done this? And we start yeah. like piecing things together. So the fact that the discourse was around some of the events and like, what were the motivations? What was the subcontext? Uh, it got a little bit annoying at times, but 
it shows the fact that a lot of the bones, like the, uh, you know, the bare structure of this show is solid, which is yeah. great. What about you, Leanna? Um, yeah, no, I mean, kind of the same. I, because they got rid of the knuckleheads that ruined Game of Thrones. I was like, well, most of the team that did Game of Thrones was good. So yeah. if they have those people back, the, mm -hmm. the source material has a completed story. So there's yeah. no like open end where they're going to, you know, have new showrunners that equally fall on their faces when they try to finish a story that's not finished. Yeah. So it was like, it's contained, it's finished. Like they learned from their mistakes. I was like, I don't know if like, it'll be as exciting or interesting to watch, but I'm sure it'll be quality is like kind of my expectation. And well, then I was just like, go ahead. I was gonna say like my experience of watching the show was kind of like my experience reading Fire and Blood. I expected mm -hmm. to read Fire and Blood and be like, this will be quality. And it may not be that fun to read. Yeah. And then I had a ball reading it. I actually really <laughs> yeah. enjoyed it. And then watching House of the Dragon was the same. I was like, I think it'll be quality. I don't know how mm -hmm. invested I'll be in this. And then like halfway through, I was like, I think I like this more than Game of Thrones. <laughs> so, Damn. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I would go that far. But but like you're saying, it's the issue towards the end of Game of Thrones was the writing. Like everything else was fine. It was like mm -hmm. dialogue, logic, and like the way that it was literally written was what went downhill. And I feel like they knocked most of that out of the park with the show. I mean, yeah, they changed some stuff from the books either to make it cooler on screen or, to, you know, you know, creative de decisions that ultimately don't impact it all that much. And they also expanded on things that you, you kind of had like a vague glimpse of what happened in fire and blood. Yeah. And then they explained it. So, I mean, that's their explanation of it. That doesn't necessarily mean like that's 100% the way that it happened in the book, it's still up, you know, for interpretation, mm -hmm. but it's cool to get that kind of closure in a sense of like Damon's wife, like she died when you, they basically showed you like, no, he, he definitely killed her. <laughs> like, so little things like that. That was one just, of the first scenes cool. that I disliked in the show. <laughs> but see, but, but that for me, I was just like, okay, they're just confirming that he did it. But I mean, you but can they cut like away. That, but, yeah, Maybe she, he didn't. <laughs> she's still laying there. <laughs> I yeah. just like the scene when we when we just like see him looking like a Jedi waiting in the like <laughs> walkway. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for the lightsaber. I was like, what is this scene? I don't like it. They may have reached for the cloak a couple times too many in this. Those crime hoodies are but it <laughs> But I mean, if you're going through funny. the going through the city, hiding your identity. But if you're standing in a field and you're just standing there alone, <laughs> yeah, with a hood on, and I'm like, what is this scene? Yeah, that scene was one of those ones where it's like, okay, we got to shoot this and we got to hurry up and get out of here, kind of deal. Yeah. Like, I don't know if they had a time set on that. And they were like, yeah, the park rangers coming, we got to dip. But that scene, I think, out of the entire season, actually, might have felt the most out of place. Yeah. Well, um, like I suggested, we'll either cut it entirely because you don't need it. Because like there's lots of conversations sure. later that allude to this happening, so you don't actually need to see it. But if you mm -hmm. do want like us to see her face and like us to see who she is, if they had said, "Oh, I'm going riding," and then we kind of pan over, and then the next time we see the horse, the horse is riderless because it's riding without her, and mm -hmm. then we pan over again and we see that she's like dead, and then maybe you see like the brush of a cloak somewhere leaving, yeah. and you're like, somebody probably killed her, or was it an accident? And the next or... time you see Damon and he's confronted about it, he's like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Like that him, would be subtler. Like, what about Cyrax going off through the clouds? Like, you just pan up. Yeah, to, something. You know Instead I mean? of, like, something standing in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you literally could have even just had, like, like Damon kicked up on a table. Like, maybe she fell. Be like, mm. yeah, something's yeah, I mean, up they with don't that. need the scene at all, but yeah. yeah. Now, one thing I did like about the scene. Um, yeah, there's going to be spoilers, theory. guys. Like, the show's been out for a while. We're talking about the entire season. So. Yeah. Also, that happened in, like, the first couple episodes. Yeah. We're going to spoil the show. The show. <laughs> yeah, geez. Uh, one of the things I liked about that scene, and they did this also whenever um, Crispy Cole kills Joffrey at the wedding, is that they added, like, some yeah, confusion. See, so so there's things about it I like. And, and I like the fact that it's very confusing of what's happening and what's mm -hmm. instigating these yeah. things. And in in spirit is keeping true to fire and blood. And the fact that, yeah, yeah. we are getting an interpretation of what happens in history uh, mm -hmm. through House of the Dragon. But there's still like room for him. You know, there, it's a little bit ambiguous. Like yeah. what happened with the horse? Did Damon scare the horse on purpose? Did the horse just get? I don't know. I mean, he bashed her head with a rock. Ass, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's because she called him out. Yeah, how dare she? 
Uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like there, there's he a, can there's finish, a chaos. Like, but no, it's just like, what was he doing standing there anyway if he wasn't there to kill her? Like, give me a reason he's standing in that walkway if it's not to kill her. <laughs> yeah. spooky. Um, the, the issue I had with that scene that like I love that entire episode and most of that scene, what I wait, didn't like one? the wedding, okay. the crispy Cole, Cole the ceremony down. that happens. But yeah, crispy Cole, the fact that he did that and like no one gave a fuck. Yes, just, like, yes, thank you. Away. Well, thank you. So I think and got a that... promotion. But like so, like in just in that moment, the fact that like no one stops him, no one does anything. They just watch it happen, and like other people start fighting. And then he leaves. Funny. No one. But then like, he just gets takes... up and walks out. He's just like, "That's done now." Like... So to def- defend it in 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 very light terms, I mm-hmm. would say that one crispy Cole is the baddest man in King's Landing. Like, if someone tries him, he's gonna kill them. Uh, Graham McTavish would definitely Graham stop McTavish a muddle in his yeah. I hope he does. <laughs> Where um, was he? <laughs> um, but the second thing is the Kings Guard are a pretty privileged bunch. Sure. Um, they definitely like get away with a lot more. Viserys is dumbass. Was just like, what's happening? He's like, he just killed <laughs> a favorite of the like prince consort person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, it's certainly in front of deal. everybody. Like, it is certainly a huge deal, right? Um, and maybe we should have seen some of that fallout. Like, maybe it would have been nice to have another episode with that. Um, which there's a couple episodes actually where I felt like things could have been expanded or on. Or even but... some lines that Im- imply that right. time has passed, but there was yeah. a time in which he had to earn back good favor because he had done that or something. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, like, but, like in the book, he dies there in the tournament, right? He dies in so the he tournament. He dies a few days later from yeah, the wounds he, he got from the tournament. Yeah. Okay. Which my big beef with the show is is that I actually this this is a hot take. Uh and Uh-oh. someone actually Esther mentioned this in chat she said too many childbirths and I totally understand. But like that oh, is true that. to this source material because this is all about who's the heir in a succession drama, right? Mm-hmm. So I was kind of civil wars between two mothers. Yes, and in this time of Westeros and really all times of Westeros, it's all about pumping out the kids, keeping the line pure, keeping it going, all that stuff, right? So I like the fact that they were kind of uncompromising with that. But my problem is, is the reason why they cut the Joffrey scene is simply this. They said, we already had our tourney scene earlier in the season. We can't do it again. Damon, yeah. Well, it's not. It's also the fact that we have to have a death at a wedding because that's tradition. For Game of Thrones. <laughs> they probably also did think I would imagine they said, well, wouldn't it be great if someone died at this wedding? The <laughs> we, showrunners we, did we, basically say that they're like, yeah. well, you have to have a death at a Westeros wedding. And then we right. got like, I mean, this par for the course. I would compare it very much to Gregor Clegane and the just him running amok, burning and pillaging, you know, a complete countryside and Tywin Lannister being like, it's fine. Yeah. But and then Ned peasants. Stark comes It's not in. like the prince's favorite in front of the prince. Well, <laughs> it, yeah, it's not exactly the same. But I, I'm trying to show that there is a certain amount of privilege that comes with being oh, for sure. a favorite of someone in court, which Alicent then provides the protection for him going forward. So, But that's I, where also I was like, at this point <clears throat> in the story, I don't really get why Alicent would stick her neck out for him. Like at this point, there's not been enough between them. Where she like, feels uh, like Crispy and her have been betrayed yeah. by Rhaenyra. Yeah, but that's... they just had that conversation like a day ago, and all she knows about him is that he did bang the princess. So like, which, now I'm gonna which, defend way, you. Like, watched... I just watched you murder somebody after you told me that you did have relations with the princess. You seem like a pretty not great guy. <laughs> yeah, but he's about to kill himself. So I feel like, especially with her, with her pie, like how pious she is, I feel like she probably looks at that and has pity on him in that moment and says like, look how hurt he is, and look what he has just done. I'm not saying it's the greatest decision in the world, but. I can kind of see it. And to be fair, Allison's dumb as shit. Um, yeah, like she nice. makes, she should, Whoa. she started playing a game that she didn't have all the pieces for. And or it's an, very, or an attraction manual. well, she went from yeah. being a pawn from being a pawn to being a queen and like had to figure out how to, I mean, how good was her entrance to that wedding though? The wedding feast, I should say when her that walking green. with the green dress yeah. sick. And then we get that line of exposition from, I think Harwin. Yeah, it's like green's what they wear when they go to war. Just so you know, viewers. (laughs) That also like it just like so the wedding episode was like my favorite and least favorite episode because it did so many things that I loved and so many things that I was like, yeah, you did this for like spectacle that doesn't really make narrative sense. Like Allison walking in like that, I was like, you're declaring war because you heard that Rhaenyra slept with her king's guard. So you're like, let it be war now when you have like no power. And well, like your dad isn't there and like girl yeah 
I mean, I know what you mean, but I think the dress is subtle enough that no one's going to say anything because the reason yeah. why Harwin Strong actually tells that guy next to him is because they've it's lived so in almost a century of peace. So these people have forgotten what an act of war looks like in Westeros. So I think that, yeah, I mean, it is bold, but I think that that is like kind of the idea is that she's coming to her own. And in, in a way, it's almost like kind of sad because uh, Carrie, the actor, Emily, Emily Carey, or is it Emily? Mm -hmm. Emil, yeah, Emily Carey. She... I yeah, thought she did really good in the show, but mm -hmm. it was like we only got her coming out party then. Yeah. And then we switched the actresses, though. Olivia Cook and her look so identical. My wife didn't even notice. She was like, <laughs> I did like, why did they change Rhaenyra and not Allison? And I'm like, oh, see, did. actually, I thought the Rhaenyra match was closer than really Allison. Yeah. The only Millie. reason I didn't is because Millie's got some some teeth that like her jaw is so pronounced that it's like. She looks like I mean, I didn't Nunez. think that any of them looked identical, but I thought the Rhaenyra match was closer. Well, Crispy Cole looks identical because they didn't <laughs> oh my God, it's a vampire. <laughs> Obviously, the more noticeable ones, which we can talk about just like the aging up of the characters every three episodes or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. But like mm -hmm. Amond is one of the more noticeable ones, obviously. Like most of the kids. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like uh, the, like the young different. actors for Amond and um, Aegon look yeah. reverse of each other like the young Aemon looks more yes. like old Aegon and the yeah, young I'd agree yeah all those young... performances were fantastic by the way yeah they're, they're love, performing like... of the interpretation of how the character was good yeah. but they're like faces I agree yeah um speaking of Crispy Cole though like the <laughs> I don't know what that was the whole scene though of him just like spewing everything to to Allison. She's like, oh, it was me. I slept with the queen. She was just like, what the fuck? That, <laughs> I was so like, mad at him. I was, I was really laughing. hoping again for that scene to have like, okay, I I, don't know, I think I said this in my video. Um, I was really hoping for a scene where they are talking and never talking about the same thing and only the audience knows what they're talking about. Where she's mm. like, I want to know a thing and he's like, I can confirm that thing happened but at no point are they saying the same thing and then she walks away going, she did sleep with Damon and he walks yeah. away going, now she knows that I slept with her. And then later he realizes that Allison thinks that he's confirmed that she slept with Damon and he's not going to mm -hmm. go back now and tell her that mm -hmm. actually I was talking about me. And yeah. like, that's what I wanted that scene to be. But instead he's like, it was me. I did it. She's like, well, now you're my favorite person in the world. And now I will defend you against anything and everything because you yeah. slept with Rhaenyra and told me about it. <laughs> enemy of my enemy, something like that. Right. I mean, Crispy Cole is by far the most frustrating character in the show, right? He's definitely the most punchable. I want to hit him so hard. <laughs> so hard. So you know who weird. else wants to hit him so hard? Is Allison. Yeah, that um, that uh, little bit of hint towards the end of the season. I think it was in the coronation episode where she's like, for your queen, and she kind of gives him. Then like again, the all she's got at home is Viserys, so... Well, let me ask you. Crispy Cole looks pretty good. Do you two do you two believe that Crispy Cole and her got it on while Viserys was still alive? I don't think you they don't. got it on at all. You think she's leading them on? Yeah. I feel like if they, well, at least in the show, like if they were going to do it, they would have shown us something. Hmm. So and again, no, like I think she's manipulating. I think it would make total him. sense. Yeah, yeah for I, sure. I think it's also in, in direct contrast because we see her go from that scene to standing up for her father to her father for the first time. And he says, you know, you're just like your mother. And she doesn't bite. She's like, mm -hmm. to whatever. And she walks away. And then we go directly into the scene where now Laris is manipulating her, which, you know, mm -hmm. I know you guys had to have loved that scene. I um, didn't care. I was laughing. I thought she was I, hilarious. Dude, I was dying. And I texted you, like, you. That also came I out thought it was like, funny. I was, that didn't it was super sense. random. And I, I was, was like, dude, <laughs> this is getting so funny. Because it Bro, was just was like laughing. slowly building to the I was like, oh, he's doing that now. Okay. Fun <laughs> fact. Sweated. On Bend the Knee, the uh, Song of Ice Fire podcast, I do with my friend Matt. Uh, our number one search term for our entire channel is foot fetish. Because <laughs> we made a yes. stupid short and we ruined our algorithm. <laughs> yes. It's Laris feet and foot fetish are the two tops. As I was watching okay. it, because I had I had heard people real quick. I had heard people so mad about it, and I was I was like live, like not tweeting, but I was like live texting. I was just like, "Why are people so mad about this? This is fine." We're like, what do you guys don't like? Feet? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I don't actually think that he looks like Joaquin Phoenix at all. However, when I was watching the show, 
I did think his character so extremely reminded me of Commodus in Gladiator. Like the entire time I was watching him, I was like, I don't think he looks like Joaquin Phoenix at all. But like the way he's this like whiny prince who's like, love me, love me. No one loves me in Mm -hmm. private. And then in public, he's like, they're cheering for me. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, (laughs) you could see his face change when he got on stage. And I think the dialogue between him and Allison and the carriage over was really important Mm -hmm. um, because I, kind of felt a little bit for him there even though he's a piece of shit i actually yeah. felt just a little bit for him you know my dad never loved me and you're like yeah I, fuck, that's which sucked. feels like Commodus from gladiator <laughs> yeah 100 percent. yeah and and then when he gets on stage you know and he's like seeing people accept him it's like oh this is kind of sick he starts and, that sword thrust and then he's like oh they liked it it's just like <laughs> dude that whole coronation it. was the shit yeah. it was so good until they ruined the entire show oh geez i mean r.i.p dragon i thought that that was um i thought Think a lot more people were the peasants upset. jimmy oh my god i love that the peasants died they're traitors Me too. and Fuck they're performing treason by being a, yeah they were forced but i don't care treasonous treasonous but uh i thought a lot more people were upset about episode nine and then i like you know you talk to people outside of like you know twitter <laughs> go outside of the subreddit <laughs> and you realize that it's one of the higher range episodes and like yeah. people loved it and um which I've spent hours, I think, now talking about how it makes sense. So mm-hmm. I won't bother. I won't bore everyone. It's like it. being on Twitter for five hours and then walking outside. Be like, did you see this thing on Twitter? And they're like, what's Twitter? Be no, like, but oh, Jimmy, yeah. you haven't no talked for hours on my channel about it. I've only been the one defending that scene. Well, so if you would like to add your voice to the people yelling at me. <laughs> the fact that anyone thinks that Rainey's gives a shit about peasants is there. I, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I yeah. don't even know where to begin. The show is a critique on monarchy and the fact that people think a bloodline is superior. I mean, it, yeah, Rainey's isn't a good person. She's None she might be are. better. Point. Exactly. She might be better than some, but she's not great. It's um, all relative. In a now, show in which an entire family is trying to kill each other for a chair. A show in which the, 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 the virtuous characters that you're rooting for are all doing incest. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, and and I see advocates saying uh, not burning the greens creates a plot hole. It's not a plot hole. It, it is not a plot hole because you have to remember Rainey's has grown up during the century of peace. And she says in the next episode exactly what why she didn't do it. It's not her. It's exactly what I said was her position in the previous episode. I was <laughs> like, oh, I called it. Yes, motherfucker. But not only that, for Rainey's the character, this is the first time we actually see Rainey's have agency. Literally, they give you an example in, in imagery by locking her in a tower earlier in mm-hmm. the episode and then trying to be played. And Rainey's finally says, I'm not having any of this. And we see her go through trauma all season long. And she says very few lines. Actress did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. And this is her moment of agency. I also saw people saying that they felt like Allison's agency was taken away by the whole Aegon Viserys thing, which is I, I don't think people know what the word agency means. Like, I think they're actually just, they just don't have any idea. Um, you keep also, using that word. I do not think it means. What you think it, means. it drives me crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, and I'm not going off on you advocate and chat. I'm, I'm more so just generally going off, but it's not a plot hole. It's not. Yeah, it's, not um, it's Rainey's taking. Uh, like for people saying that the, the debris would as likely have killed Rainey's when she pump, pump, goes through the, the floor like that. I'll fine. be like, yes, that's fine. fair point. She could easily fair. have died from that. Like, I'll give you yeah. that. But in terms of like, her like motivation to do this, her motivation to choose not to burn them, like all of that, like her character decisions, like that checks out for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And people are pointing out the family ties. Um, but also there's other people on that stage that have nothing to do with her family as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if she burns someone of the faith right there. So now you have, now you have a problem with the faith. She would be doing uh regicide kin slaying um, like faith, person slaying like the the number of like high crimes that she would commit in one blow would be a lot to consider yeah a lot of people said the war would be over right then and there and now they may win it but the war would not be over it actually would begin the war yeah um and then you would probably have high lords coming out against her uh and all she also allison has another yes, kid that wasn't there yeah yes that's right we have daron right and he or however you say it dayron daron but also another thing about that is do you think if rainies had burned all the greens that rainier would have came in and said yes that was a great job no she would have came in and said rainies how dare you i can't believe you killed part of the family and then lock her up forever or put her to death you know what i mean like yeah. it's not a good move for the longevity of rainies and i but think so she's and had... then people are like oh so she'll kill peasants but she won't kill the king like yes, yes. because the king matters more than the peasants they will those kill are the rules all the peasants <laughs> yeah. because they don't give a single f 
Yeah. Like, uh, and and that will play into the story. Bucks is not the president or whatever he's Oh, no. Christoph no. Yeah, and that will actually have ramifications later. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> I mean, you should have read Fire and Blood. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe they kept the show going. It's so ridiculous. But I mean, also, yeah, I mean, just from a show standpoint, they wanted a spectacle scene with a, a cool scene with a dragon. Sure, and like, was it a bit ridiculous? Of... Like, yeah, it was a bit Sure. Ridiculous. But also, like, to... to say with a straight face oh she should have just killed everybody like that's what i would have done that it's like okay you're writing a show though like you also have to remember that like things happen in books like this all the time because you still want the book to continue it's not like like yeah they have dragons they could have just swooped in and killed a bunch of people but Mm -hmm. does that make it good no it doesn't yeah, and I think a lot of people also just go with the presumption of war where you have to remember, again, we've been in a century worth of peace. Viserys mm-hmm. has kept the peace just like Jaehaerys did. And Rhaenys is expecting that. Even with all of this happening, I think she's still expecting that. Um, yeah. And also, it's, it's, a, it's a show of power, right? Like this, more of this to come. Absolutely. Because the dragons absolutely favor the blacks at this point. So uh, it, it's certainly not nearly as problematic as people made it out to be. And if uh, David Lightbringer who I think is one of the best people in the Assault of Ice Fire community, had an entire thing about it. And it was really, really well put, I thought. And he's been critical of the show in the past. And like he's a fair judge. So when I saw him be okay with it, I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. You know, if someone else agrees with me. Because for a second, I thought I was going crazy. I was like, am I the only person that didn't think this was ridiculous? But the more, um, you know, I looked into it, I, it's, it's mostly just online. Yeah, it is. If you just watch the show and enjoy it, like... It's fine. Yeah. Just, it, but it's also not nonsense. Like it's not uh, go get a white Walker and bring it to Cersei nonsense, which oh, is what people were equating it to. They were equating it to season eight level of dumb. Yeah. And that's just ridiculous. Like, honestly, I'm way more mad that Kristen could kill Joffrey at a wedding and not have consequences than that. Rhaenys busted through Me the too. floor with a dragon and flew away. I like the scene. I but, thought it was cool. But also the people defending Kristen being able to do that are the first to say Rhaenys on the dragon makes no sense. And I'm like, I'm yeah. sorry. Well, that's weird. Excuse me. Hmm. Are you saying that a dude killing another dude, no matter the circumstances? Well, that's just how the times were, you know. Yeah. But a woman on a dragon <laughs> busting through the floor, they're like, no, oh. that would that doesn't fly. That's dumb. Like, well, hmm. I would say hmm. the Joffrey killing from Crispy is more egregious than uh, dragging through the floor because all she kills are peasants, and literally no one cares. And also, just why why put her in that position in the first place? Just do it differently. Like that's not helpful. Sorry. Yeah, and and. Like, also, there, there's a lot of explanation. What scene would you have rather seen that she snuck away and just flew away? Like, OK, yeah. I But also, like, again, I think that I don't think it's one of these things where we're ignoring logic. I think there's a plenty of reasoning mm-hmm. for, for why it happened. Well, and uh, yeah. And again, like for the people saying, well, there was another exit. She could have left another way. Yes. But like we're talking about what Rainice is thinking on this is and the fact that she's not going to kill them does not mean that she doesn't mm-hmm. want them to know that she's like. I'm the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. You can't keep me down. Watch me go. Bye. I'm going to yeah, go tell Rhaenyra what you just did. Like, yeah, the, she's showing up. That is still a, a show of power, even if you're not killing people. So, like, like, I literally are... feel like had she just crawled through the front door in her dragon and looked at them and then flew away or been like, I'm going now. Like all these dumb dums complaining wouldn't have cared. So it's like, do you really care that much that instead of doing that, she broke through a floor and killed some peasants? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, the and, point was made. That's and, the point of the scene. Yeah, and we have the context of the next episode with Rainey's acting very consistent with the fact that she didn't burn the greens and the fact that she does not kneel to Rhaenyra, mm-hmm. which again is a very dangerous circumstance to be in. Which yeah. it was At the funeral, to... like when everyone else is kneeling, she's didn't standing bend. in the back. And then which when again, she's... Like... When I was defending the Rainies on the dragon busting through the floor scene, I was like, her position is like, look, maybe we'll go to civil war over this. That's not my call. It's not my crown. It's not up to me if we, if, if this, maybe Rainier is going to bend the knee to this. I don't know. That's not my problem. That's not my call. And when she shows up and she's like, this is what happened. And Damon's like, you could have put a stop to this. And she was like, it's not my call. It's up to you. I was like, exactly. It's not her call. Like, why would she be like, I've just single handedly decided to start a civil war. When it's Rhaenyra's claim, and it's up to Rhaenyra yeah. if she's going to go to war over her claim. Yeah, and she kneels to her once she sees that she's trying to keep the peace, which does not contradict what she did in episode nine, because in episode nine, all she did was kill some peasants. Yeah, and I got to break she it didn't to you: kill anybody that was important. No one gives a shit about them peasants. Also, they're tra- they're traitors. 
Whether Damon was literally marching through the streets of King's Landing with Kingsguard and like cutting people's testicles off and burning them. Like no one cares about anyone that lives in King's Landing but the royalty. Damon like, is so hot. We stand. Like, <laughs> let's not pretend that anyone in the history of this world that we're talking about has ever cared about poor people. Oh no, they Damon don't. is choking Rhaenyra. Oh, I can't romanticize that. Oh, Dude, people were very oh, upset about that oh, and then no. ignored the fact that he killed his wife. <laughs> it's like, come on, yeah. Because he was such a great guy until he choked Rhaenyra. <laughs> he was. My favorite My thing, unproblematic prince. <laughs> I literally saw people tweeting and getting lots of engagement on the shithole that is Twitter. And they were like, uh -huh. this assassinates Damon's character from the books. And I'm like, what character? What? Wait, isn't he like pure evil in the books anyway? Like, but it's also like, it's a history book with, with yeah. a biased retelling from different Plus sources. Also, you know? he's done a ton of much worse things in the show. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. what are you talking about? Do you remember when he stomped the dude that was excited to see him in episode three with his dragon? Yeah. I mean, it was a peasant, so no one cares. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> that was funny, though. He was like, oh, he's here to save us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how did you guys feel about the end of episode three? Because that was another really controversial, a lot of people saying spectacle over whatnot. So I had heard the controversy before I saw oh, the Damon episode. Damon doing his, like, suicide run. And people made it sound like it was like some superhero thing. And I mean, I will say it was, you know, fantastical, right? And a little sure. bit of a stretch of the imagination. But he got hit with some arrows. Um, there was smoke. I mean, it's a little silly for him to sprint full on toward what looks like lots and lots of archers and like no one hitting him. Sure. Yeah. It's a little silly. Yeah, I'm not saying it's super realistic, but it wasn't nearly as egregious as people had made it out to be. Because, I mean, we all remember Battle of the Bastards, which was sick, by the way. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Everyone like, hates um, on it now, but I someone thought it was, was like quite upset about that scene in my comments. And I was like, look, uh, like two answers to that. One, when we talk a look at like a memorable stories from history, they are the unlikely stories. So like survivors of unlikely mm. circumstances tell their stories and you're like, you would think that I would be dead, but this is this crazy yeah. thing that happened to me. Those are the stories worth telling. So mm -hmm. like some, uh, some of that in a story is like called for because that's why we're telling the story is because yeah. it's the uncommon story. And also as long as it's not every battle, every time, like if every single time Damon shows up in a battle and he's just like impervious to damage, then I'd be like, <laughs> okay, this is stupid. But like one battle, one time where it was that, that story that legends are made of that songs are sung about i'd be like okay kind of like a uh, galadriel was oh get in every <laughs> well Dude. you see what you do is she has the secret strategy I'm gonna keep of doing stab it, so. twist gut and if you know the secret method then you were impervious to damage there's that and also every time someone shoots an arrow at you while you're on horseback you can just like hit slow mo button yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Just hit the dodge button on the bro. Camera. The worst shit I saw in Rings of Power, and that's why I DNF'd it, is whenever she's they're trying to stab her and she's going, <laughs> It's the worst yeah. shit I've ever seen. That's because you use your feet, not your hands, to fight, unless you're Horrible. doing stab, twist, gut, which is definitely with your Horrible. hands. So I'm not it, sure about that. Dude, it, it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was one silly scene, whatever. It's fine. Well, how did you feel about the, like that entire plot in general, though? What, the crab like, feeder? Yeah. I, so I loved it because, you know, we have the foresight of the book. So a lot yeah. of people were like, I can't believe they killed him off so quick. What a waste of a character. I'm like, oh, he's nothing. Like, he's a footnote. Mm -hmm. He is a he's a piece of character development for Damon. Um, what I will say is the character well, they did design, build him up at the show more, though, which I get why people would feel that way. Uh, yeah, for me, if he hadn't looked so fucking cool, I would have been, like, totally cool with it. But, like, I do wish we wouldn't have so seen gross. Him. Dude, what a good it's character. So it's a great gross. character design. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, the crab, like, the scenes, like, kind of foreshadowing. I think it was in episode two, right? Wherever they show the crab, like, eating a corpse, like, towards the oh, end. Oh, God. Like, Honestly, like, the most ugh. horrific thing in this entire show was, like, the emotional roller coaster of being, like, those crabs are so cute, but they're eating people. <laughs> and just being, like, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really liked episode three myself, um, especially with the white stag and the hunt. I thought that yes. Millie's and uh, the guy playing Crispy Cole, I thought yeah. their their dynamic was really Fa good. Fabian, is that his name? Fabian's Fabian a Chad name. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Fabian? I think Fabian. it's Fabian. They had a baby and they went, we should name him Fabian. <laughs> it's like they, they had an oracle. It was like, he's going to be the, the chattiest he's Chad. He's going to be fabulous. <laughs> Fabian, yeah. the balls. If that kid had grown up a six, he'd have been fucked. He probably oh, go yeah. by his middle name. 
Fabian. Uh, he'd be like, my name's John. <laughs> yeah, you got to balance it. You got to. Fa- it's like Herbert. It's like Fabian Herbert Jones. Dorfbinkel. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck his name is, but I'm swearing a lot. Let me know if it's too much. <laughs> it's fine. I'm sorry, Leanna. I swear a lot. Too. I don't want you to get demonetized. Oh, oh I told her during our Empire of the Vampire chat so now, it was getting demonetized. There's also, no it chance. hasn't. Like, you read that entire sex scene and swore the entire time, and the monetization is fine. But I, on a different stream that was, like, um, with the gals that I have the book club with, we were talking about a bodice ripper, and that got demonetized. And I was like, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? I think go. as long as you wait first five minutes and keep it clean, I don't think YouTube. Like, it's just some dude That's where, office. yeah, you gotta wait a couple minutes. He's over it. I did not. <laughs> no, you did It was not. immediate. <laughs> I mean, my name on the stream was like, I'm so fucking edgy right now. <laughs> I'm so fucking edgy right now. So how did uh, you guys feel about like the initial cast, though? Just in general, like the fir- the the young the young cast for the well, first three episodes. It's also weird because like, as far as I know, right, like they cast Olivia Cook and um, Emma Darcy like prime mm-hmm. and then found mm-hmm. people to match them. But yeah, our yep. experience of them is that we experienced the young ones first and we're like, are these older ones going to match them? <laughs> That's so funny, actually. <laughs> Which is probably why it works so well, right? Because like, if you look on IMDb and stuff, the lowest rated episode generally is episode six, where the switch happens. But the funny thing is, is after the switch, uh, seven through ten are almost unanimously every rating because like highest. stuff starts happening because yeah, you know, nothing yes. was happening before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and honestly, I think Emma Darcy and Olivia Cook put in a hell of a performance. Emma Darcy oh, yeah, yeah. killed it as Rhaenyra, I thought, and it also helps that the. Uh, I can't ch- think of a single member of the cast that I think is a weak point. There's only one weak point. Masaria's accent. Masaria's oh, accent. Oh, I don't regard that so, as part of the cast. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. I, it's so I bad. would do an imitation, but I I don't even think I could do a bad enough I imitation. Don't, I will. It's, just, it's the shits. It's the shits. It just sounds so, racist. It's so bad. Like it just sounds they did not have to do that. It's it's bad. Like it was it, criminal. They can just retcon it. Like she should just not have that accent. Legitimately, just, like a few times when she was talking, I thought that she was speaking a different language in universe. And I was like, where's the subtitles? And then I was like, oh <laughs> no, she's speaking. Dude, English. that scene with Otto, like to what see episode seven or whatever it was, when they're just like sitting down right before like the the building gets burned or whatever, you could literally not understand her. It's so bad. It was awful it's like she's speaking broken westerosi and it's like i guess oh man sounds like english with a bad accent it was bad and also i do think so i like masaria like the actress is actually really I was gonna say, like even though the casting's yeah. not bad it's whoever decided to say do this accent <laughs> yes and i really like what they're building here and we're not going to spoil anything beyond season one but the fact that masaria is at play here with Otto and she's battling for the people and we see the children fighting pits which actually had a payoff mm-hmm. which i thought was kind of cool well not a payoff but like there's more to it than just showing it and then also you know the dragon pit scene we just talked about in episode nine like this is all going to come together you know yeah. we have a figurehead for the the small people for the first time maybe ever in westeros tv history and i think masaria is going to have a lot of changes from the books but i think it's going to be for the better so we really just need the accent to stop because it could be a great plot point going forward and she's a good actress she's really good especially if she's going to be in the show more mm-hmm. so yeah you can't have that accent cannot keep doing well it. i like it's how so did, you, bad. did you guys watch the narnia movies that they did. I did not. And I've seen them. Yeah. Seen some so, like Christian Ben Allegory? Barnes played Prince Caspian yes. oh, in Prince Caspian. Wait, Ben Barnes uh, is a real name? Yes. What? Yeah. I thought that was a character in uh, Lee Bardugo shit. No, that's, that's an the actor name. playing yeah. the character in it. Oh. His name is Ben Barnes. All right, let me look this guy up. <laughs> anyway, so Ben Barnes played Prince Caspian in Prince Caspian, and they d- had him do this Spanish accent, and he legit said that he just watched Princess Bride over and over to do that accent. And then in the next <laughs> movie, <laughs> In the next movie, he's still in it. Um, the Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Um, that character is still in it, but they just got rid of the accent and the fake tan and just had him be a British dude in the next movie. And I was like, yes. Yep. Yeah, that's so what we do need. do that. For no, no. Just retcon it and be like, oh, no sorry, I went to care. Westerosi English class. I like, don't they care. don't explain it in the Narnia no, movies. You don't the next have to time you see Prince Caspian, and he's it. just, hello, I'm a British chappy. <laughs> You're like, yes. Don't explain it. <laughs> just have it happen. Everyone online is going to know why. They're going to be like, okay, good. They admitted their mistake. <laughs> Listen, like they fixed it. A- Astrid's calling me out. Why does Jimmy squint his glasses on? It's because I'm old. Okay. <laughs> it's because I'm getting old. Uh, ben like Barnes 32. is not, not a dime pee. I'm, thir- I'm 32 in two weeks. Uh, yeah, oh, you're younger like than 40. me. You're not old. Shut up. Listen. All right. Side story. I went to the eye doctor about a month ago. 
And yeah. I went because I couldn't see road you signs. Keep squinting. You went to the eye doctor. I did. I did. So I couldn't see road signs when I was driving. I went to the eye doctor and they were like, sir, you've been driving legally. And I'm like, but I wear my glasses. See. That's how bad my Is it eyes. an outdated prescription? That's how bad it was. Yeah. It's like, God. So I'll I'm be blind. The authorities. I'm going to look like Aria in the house of black and white. <laughs> no good. Um, Ben Barnes is not a dime piece. I was led to believe that he was a dime piece. This He's no Fabian. He's no Graham McTavish. He ain't no <laughs> Graham McTavish, bro. This guy, I mean, he's... I mean, you guys don't care about that fandom, but I'm pretty mad that he got cast in that role. And yeah, I'm not pleased. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about him. Which fandom are we talking about? Shadow and Bone. Oh, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> oh, Ben Jimmy. Barnes, yeah. The dude from Westworld, yeah. Jimmy oh, has okay. been listening to Alan about Ben Barnes. It's literally the only place I know him from. <laughs> I mean, weirdly, like, I feel like me and Alan do agree about Ben Barnes. Huh. <laughs> yeah, so Masari's accent is the weakest point of the show. It's got to go. Um, yep. The worst part for the, I feel like we're kind of focusing on the negatives a little bit, but um, the worst part of the show for me was actually the end of episode seven, whenever we actually see the Strongs get murdered by Laris and we see Lena uh, Valerion die. It's not that I didn't like those plot points. I thought they were fantastic. I thought the execution of the scenes like in the moment were really great. Mm -hmm. the, the actress for Lena killed that episode. I thought she did but such also, a good like, job. But also, how many actresses did we have playing Lena for a character that's hardly it? <laughs> I know, right? And what about the garden yep. walk? Oh, God, that was awkward, wasn't it? That was oh. hilarious. <laughs> I'm so glad that they did it that way. Because it, it could have been Viserys is disgusted the whole time. He's like, I don't like this. This is icky. And then he's just like, How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, She does the whole like, I will bear you many children. And he's just like, Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, you are a child. Patty Constantine could have been on some list if they would have went the D and D route because D and D only made things worse in the show as far as like you know graphic nature. Um, this show did a much better job of taking care in those moments, I think, mm -hmm. while not shying away from some of the harder moments. And you really saw this in episode four, where we kind of get like the Rhaenyra coming of age sex stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's done in a way that's a lot more tasteful than what yeah. it was in Game of Thrones. Um, yeah. I saw, and also I felt like it. pretty much always. I mean. I'm sure there's examples that counter this that I would agree with, but most, most of the time, and I was praising the show for this, um, especially as compared to a certain other fantasy show that was airing concurrently that like even, sh even scenes that are for spectacle um, mm -hmm. are always narratively significant and moving the plot forward or doing character development. So like the scenes like with a dragon or with sex or childbirth or violence, like they never feel like, Oh, this is just a scene for like showing a cool visual. It was yeah. always even cooler because not only are you like, wow, this looks really cool, but also I feel how epic this is because it means things for the plot. It means mm -hmm. things for the character. So like the sex scene with uh, Rhaenyra and, and Cole, it wasn't just, oh, they're, they're banging. It's like, who's got the power in this exchange and who yes. is like yep. trying to say no to this, but failing to say no to this. And are they, do they seem to be consenting and enjoying this? Who, what the mm -hmm. trust in their relationship is as compared to what she was witnessing in King's Landing. Like it wasn't just a sex scene because it's HBO and you got to have tits with your dragons. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it was a scene that was developing this relationship and this situation and these characters. So like it was narratively significant. And yeah. it was right after Damon and her were having their, issues and then she starts to get into it he's like wait what? he's like no i i need the power she's just like no i'm in i'm in control now he's like, she's I'm like well i'm still thirsty so crispy yeah, cold exactly. come here <laughs> yeah and and we see him give up his oath and this mm -hmm. is a guy that has come from nothing you know lowborn comes in and is not well versed in and, that, uh, and they took their time with it in that scene like there's it, it didn't just like you know they could easily cut to they're naked um, they showed yeah. like she takes off one piece and he's like kind of like no but okay and then mm -hmm. he takes off the cloak and he's like what you we, we like zoom in on him putting it down his white cloak like we did yeah. all those steps because like it's not just oh they're undressing and having sex like these were narratively significant yeah yeah i'd agree with and that. then he turns into a super sim and he's like run away with me throw all this away and she's oh like, that was the worst saying? and i saw people saying like that's so thrown. people are like that's so ridiculous that's so stupid but like come on we all know a dude 
<laughs> we all know it dude. That, that acted like that mm -hmm. after certain actions you I know just you. like lost his mind like, i love you dude <laughs> i saw a meme today that was like uh hey you know come away with me and she's like dude i got a dragon so you're gonna hunt every day to feed it <laughs> <laughs> the memes for this show were outstanding can we yeah, can yeah. we just give it up for the memes i mean my god yeah my god i uh yeah I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It was well done. Yeah. Yeah, it was great, man. And, and Millie Alcock, man, what a what a performance from her. I hope I see her more stuff because I hadn't heard of her before this show. Yeah, and neither. I think most people we did a poll on then. The well, knee. I like that in general, the cast was mainly unknowns. Yeah, because that's how yeah. Game of Thrones was. Right. You had Sean Bean, which this, you know, this show, we obviously have Matt Smith, um, mm -hmm. who killed it. Yeah, he was really good. And even then, Matt Smith is not like a Brad Pitt, you no, know. Like, he's like, like he's a good character yeah. actor. He like he can get lost. You know what most people in my right? Discord know Matt Smith from Doctor the Who? stupid scene from Morbius. Really? Oh no, not I don't know him as the Doctor. I didn't even know that that scene, the like have sex scene from Morbius, was a thing. I thought it was a joke, and I was like, "Is this a real movie?" And they're like, "Yes, it's in Morbius." And I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> I uh, I knew him from The Crown. I watched the first couple episodes of The Crown, and that's all I needed to see. I was like, this dude's regal. Yeah. He has that little okay, bit inbred look. So the look. first thing that I ever saw Matt Smith in was years and years. So like, I'm a an original fan. I'm, I can be a Jimmy on this. Oh. I knew him before everyone else knew him. Oh. Where is your Bobby B picture, huh? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, there's this, uh, I think the same author as wrote the, His Dark Materials, wrote some like mysteries and like, you know, the British TV, like, did adaptations of them so he's not the main character in it it's like about a woman um the sally lockhart mysteries so she's like doing her it's like a victorian era and and she's like doing her mysteries and like someplace she goes to like the errand boy um who ends up being like this cockney lad who kind of like helps her out and he's kind of scrappy is matt smith and he's like you know he looks like he's kind of shady and he's kind of tricksy but he like sneaks into places and like runs messages for her and like he just looked a lot like a guy that i went to school with and so my mom was just like, that looks like the guy you go to school with. So for years, we were like, if we saw him in anything, we were like, that's that guy that looks like Todd that was in the Sally Lockhart mysteries. And then, like, lo and behold, he's the, the, the doctor and Damon Targaryen. <laughs> he's had this quite the come up as an actor. I mean, you know, I, I know a lot of people knew him from Doctor Who, but then getting the crown. Yeah. And I mean, I know everyone memes on Morbius, but like it was a big role. I mean, certainly a big role in America. So. Uh, and then now with House of the Dragon, he's like household oh, yeah. name. So, also all the pe all all the memes that are about all the people that Nay say at his casting and him being like, <laughs> I'm the most popular character. <laughs> Am I, was I not the only one? I was like, this dude is perfect for yeah, Damon. It was Target. great. Was the like, only part that, of like, like his casting, menacing but... look all the time. He's great. Yeah, the only yeah. part of his casting that I like had doubts about was just that like I always you know Damon is kind of written about and. and pictured as like a beefier thicker warrior type and matt smith is kind of lanky and skinny bit of Chad. Bit of and so Chad. like he buffed up for it which is a thing you can do <laughs> so like yeah like that was the only part of it i was like i don't think like physically he like looks like it has the daemon body type but otherwise yeah. like he'd be fine yeah but i feel like a lot of like even game of thrones no one was like jacked at, like you have like the Cleganes that are massive humans jason momoa Okay, sure. He's pretty, he's pretty right. <laughs> yes. But like the for the most part, the cast, like Jorah is not some like ripped freak. Like Jon Snow mm -hmm. is like my height and build. <laughs> like they're not like big cut dudes because it's not really like that important to the story. So there is that uh preteen scene with Jon Snow, Theo, uh Theon and Rob whenever they're getting a like a shower in episode one of Game of Thrones. They're getting, they're they're getting like they're haircut. Like... Yeah, that's what it was. So uh, apparently before that scene, they all three actors were like doing a push up competition to try to get like pumped up. But if you go back and I mean, they're they're skinny, but yeah. like if you go back, and look, they're boys, like they're oh, just yeah. tiny boys, they're boys, yeah. <laughs> boys, boys. That's, that's that's my Bobby B voice. Well, should we talk about the change of making Rhaenyra and Allison friends? Yeah, we haven't talked it. about that at all. And that's kind of a big change. Huge. I liked it because they actually made Allison more interesting in the show and she killed it. Mm -hmm. Both, both hold on. Or if not more interesting, Emily then Carey, certainly more Emily like uh, conflicted <clears throat> and nuanced. Well, it made it like you had a reason to care about her. And even, even to the point now where like they're at war with each other, 
you can still feel for Allison because she was put in such a shitty situation to begin with where she's married to this old man forced to have kids like Otto's basically controlling everything that she does. She yeah. has a falling out with her best friend. Like she's completely isolated for the most part. Like you absolutely sympathize with her. And then even seeing her struggle with her own kids of like her dipshit son, that's always drunk. And like, he's like, Oh my God, where is he this time? And it's all that stuff was great. And it gives her nuance and like perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like, Oh yeah, she's the bad guy. Cause that would be boring. Yeah, I, I personally really liked it. I think one of the things that people seem to to have a bit of an issue with is that they felt like, and this word is now thrown around all the time on the internet, and I can't stand it, whitewashing. People felt like they were a little bit whitewashing Allison from the book, and even Rhaenyra at some points. But what yeah. I will say is, we have probably three other seasons to go. They're going to do some heinous shit. I think they just wanted to show why mm -hmm. they have gotten to this point. Because they are living in a patriarchy, and it does matter. Like whether or not you want that to be part of the narrative, it's a part of it. And um, I think the Allison, which the people out here defending the greens and saying, it doesn't matter what Viserys said. Rhaenyra can't inherit the crown. The greens are in the right. It should be Aegon. A woman can't inherit the crown. Like the rules are what they say they are. If the king says she can inherit, then those are the rules. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them, Leanna. Tell them. <laughs> um, I have to say, I think that uh, the age difference being switched is much better. It's much, much, much better. It's a lot less two dimensional. Yeah. And also, also well, would you guys like to comment on the people saying that Emma Darcy is not hot enough to play Ray well, Mira? They're fucking stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's just I mean, everyone's in like together. wigs and makeup anyway. But also the, the fact that Rhaenyra is described as like not having lost the baby weight and resenting Allison yeah. for like being skinny and pretty. And you're like, she's hotter or they are hotter than than Rhaenyra is supposed to be per the book. You know what was a really good moment of dialogue that I missed on the first time wa watching through is whenever Allison and Rhaenyra are in the carriage when they're young and Rhaenyra says that she doesn't want to be stuck up in a tower, like locked up having a kid, like pumping out children. And in the last episode, that's exactly what's happening as Damon's trying to rule. Mm -hmm. She's stuck in a tower yep. having a kid. And it's like, man. Like, you know, it's that little shit that like, you know, 90% of viewers probably, you know, you know, this watch and go, oh, it was, that was pretty good. Yeah. And I also just love ooh. the fact that they they took the time. What was it? Three different birth scenes to just show you how one, how grueling childbirth is in general. But like in I'll say in this like time period, because I mean, it's, it's, it's not real, guys. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> the, like having a kid in this situation would not be exciting i mean and odds like just, of death were pretty high especially when yeah. yeah especially when your husband's just like just cut it open you know like again this isn't history like westeros is obviously fake but y'all know yeah. a chainsaw was invented for childbirth like that's no how shit that, yeah <laughs> chainsaws were invented terrible. as a, a tool to help the birthing process by let me <laughs> i'll give you one guess the gender of the person that invented it for childbirth <laughs> What? Yeah. The Charles um, Manson invented? <laughs> but yeah, pretty much. Um, but no, just the fact that they, like, you can argue that the scene, uh, I think somebody earlier said, like, one of the scenes went on a little bit too long. Potentially, like, shorten that, sure, to, like, fill in Damon talking to his kids when, you know, their mom just got burned by a dragon. But the fact that they chose to not only spend time on that, but make it violent and bloody and the sloshing sound effects and like entirely accurate to how this this kind of thing works um it was i love the fact that they did that it was unflinching yeah well it's also the fact that like i love that in a show where like we constantly show gratuitous violence that mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. Okay, we give equal time to the violence of the bedroom that like it's yeah. not that oh women just get to sit it out and just live peaceful lives while the men go out and battle and they're just they just do nothing. They just sit there and eat cake and have it sweet. You're like, um, they're like waging a war just to give you that air that you demanded. Like, it's not pretty. It's not easy. It's not fine. And they, they give it equal time in the show as they give mm -hmm. the battling and the war. Yeah, and they do the juxtaposition in the first episode of Emma dying. 
in, yeah. in childbirth as the tourney's going on. And I know a lot of people are like, I can't believe they're showing people get killed in the tourney. And these are people of how there should be repercussions. But I, I, I think Rainey's commentary to Corliss is very telling in the fact that they're saying, like, you know, these people have been living in a time of peace and they have no idea what it means to be war, but look how bloodthirsty yeah. they are. And um, I was telling Leanna before we went live, how I just read the first page of Blood Meridian. And it kind of alludes to the fact that like they found like he, he quotes this thing. It's true. It's like they found a human skull from 300,000 years ago somewhere in Ethiopia and it had been scalped. And it's like, man, we've been killing each other and thirsting for blood for 300,000 years. And it's like that first episode is just to show you that like even through a century of peace, people don't know what they have. Well, I couldn't stop. The, I know Jimmy's read that far and Alex hasn't, but it's not spoilers. And this is the part of the live where I bring up Joe Abercrombie. Um, <laughs> in the, I uh, knew it. You almost made it. I almost made it an hour. Three seconds. That is, that is breaking um, new ground. In the Age of Madness, there's a point where they're like uh, talking about how the songs are written about like killing and dying and never about you know like a baker or like a builder and they're like it's always about killing it and and rick is like is that behavior to encourage <laughs> like we should be singing songs about people who make stuff how about that <laughs> engineering i mean if if you want heroes that are engineers you can read ken liu that was his whole idea behind the dandelion dynasty is to make the heroes the engineers which is nice kind of cool um but house of the dragon <laughs> it's not that <laughs> no what perform? Who was your guys' favorite performance from the show? If you could pick one, there's a lot of really good ones. I have to pick one, like I even mean, David Tennant's kid who played Aegon for yeah. one episode, oh, I loved it. He was. Dude, what about him ringing his bells out over King's Landing, oh, going Homelander on everybody? Yeah, that, was great. <laughs> that was great. Also, first of all, his just the the subtle of like. When when Alicent like takes the knife to Renera and tries to stab her and like everybody's just oh. like they're talking about how what her sons look like and he's just like what look at them <laughs> like what a good the delivery on that line was so good he was just like what like that whole episode he also permanently had like pouty I'm the prince face yeah it was great <laughs> it's I wish shame. he had continued yeah it's a shame they couldn't have kept oh, him God. because he was so good but then the the new Aegon was great in his coronation so. Oh, yeah. You know, the fact that I the, think the chat has voted Disney. and it's Patty. Okay, I, was <laughs> say, I mean, Patty's Patty. the obvious one. I mean, I loved uh, obviously Matt Smith as Damon is fantastic. Sure. I mean, Patty is just Patty was given so much screen time and so much love and completely brought to life. And I mean, George himself like takes yeah. his hat off to him is like, you did this better than I did because damn. Um, so freaking uh, what's his name? Uh, is it Reese? How do you pronounce his first name? Otto Rice. How do you pronounce Reese? Reese. Yeah. Freaking Reese is Otto. It was fantastic. Just that old menacing bastard of a character. Yeah, I want when, more from him. When we talk about, um, you know, like best performance, I also kind of think like some actors are just like so naturally suited to a role that you just like mm -hmm. stick them in a costume and they're good to go. Versus somebody yeah. that like has to perform this role. And in that sense, I think I would say Patty because he's the yeah. most altering himself yeah, to embody this sure. character Agreed. that doesn't mean that i think that like because there's other people that just like were like born to play that role and so you're like that doesn't i guess take that great an acting skill if you were just like perfect for that role so like it's like a different way to judge it so like performance it goes to patty i was unsure yeah. about patty when he got cast because i've always ever seen him in the outsider as the mm -hmm. the the cop of the town and i was like this guy's gonna be king like i was like yeah. eh, i don't know I've only uh, seen him play like a, a British detective in like yeah. Victorian era. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Heath Ledger. Everything that I know these actors from is Victorian era <laughs> British crime investigation. Yeah, that must be your <laughs> shit. Huh? That's what Leanna watches. But it's like when Heath Ledger was cast as the Joker, myself included, everybody was like, there's no way this is going to work. And it was fantastic. You shouldn't have though, because it killed him. Yeah. And I would say that this is that level of performance. No, it was. Like, like he the whole cast is so good, though. Well, oh, it's also, so I think, good. maybe worth talking about how much license they gave Patty to say, no, we're not doing the character from the book. I have a vision for this character. Fuck all y'all. We're doing this. And the fact that the author and the showrunners were like, okay. Yeah, and, and this is something that happened in Game of Thrones as well. Um, I will say it got him a little bit of trouble with Danny, I think, because... Yeah. 
supposedly and not to harp on you know the ending of game of thrones but season four is i believe when dan and dave came up with danny going mad which we now know was a dan and dave thing only which is crazy um they did not give us the breadcrumbs to get there and it's because they let um amelia clark kind of go her own route like she didn't know the plan for daenerys which i think is a dumb thing to do well it's like one or the other either you're gonna let this actor take Mm -hmm. the character where they want to take it or you Mm -hmm. have a plan and you say i hear you i know that's what you want to do but that is not Mm -hmm. end game for this character we need you to not do that yeah and why not clue her in that's why you run the show (laughs) yeah because if you clue if you clue the actor in in season four of eight And you could easily be like, okay, let's work in some scenes where it shows that I'm actually leaning in that direction. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't just heel turn in the final season and be like, nah. Well, I think Amelia Clark, if you had told her she's supposed to be showing signs of eventually going mad, Amelia Clark Mm -hmm. would have met them halfway and been like, I have ideas for that. But you didn't sell her. (laughs) I would even say that the events in the show, on paper, you could actually get to that point. But it's the way that they were portrayed to us were very heroic, Mm -hmm. even in the soundtrack and such. So we're meant to cheer for it. Yes. And I understand about like making people question what they were cheering for before. I think that's actually a pretty valid thing to explore, but they didn't do a very good job of it. Whereas Patty had an end point. And they trusted him to get there. And he did such a great job. I mean, even the second or is it the second? No, third episode, the hunt when he's drunk. Oh, that episode was great. And he kind of tells Lannister to shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. It's It's so good. good. I also, love to just, when uh, when Strong comes up to him and he's like, what, are you going to pitch me your son as the most ideal candidate? And he's oh, like, yeah. I mean, no. <laughs> let's give it, let's give that man a, a, a shout out, by the way. Strong was a great actor. I was yeah. sad to see him dying here and all. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. There's so many good choices in this show, honestly. Like the, the whole hunting scene was great too, though, because you almost see like how incompetent and like pathetic Viserys kind of is. Oh. Where they're like, stab him right here, sir. Like, thanks for the spear. And they're holding him. He doesn't die, and then he has to do it again. Well, I love how they juxtaposed in that that episode how there's this controlled, we've caught him, stab here, clean, barely get blood on you, next to Kristen and Rhaenyra, who are like, (laughs) 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 they're killing, getting blood everywhere. And so then everyone who's on, like all the dudes who are here for (laughs) the hunt are sitting Uh down in their tents having a nice time of it. And then in comes Rhaenyra, who's not supposed to participate in the hunt, covered in blood, because she actually, like, did some fucking hunting. Yeah, and I I loved her walk back through camp. Mm -hmm. It was so strong. Um, I mean, obviously. It's also when you get strong, just in the background, like, the first you see him, he's just like, "Mm." He's like, God damn. (laughs) Yep. I like it. My wife was like, who's that? And I was like, you'll see. It's like a, every time I see a scene like that, it's Hunchback of Notre Dame when Phoebus is like, what a woman about Esmeralda. <laughs> Someone uh, said young Eamon is very underrated. And I would like to say that. So the uh, episode where Eamon gets his eye put out, yeah. I watched the behind the scenes. I didn't, yeah, I didn't watch all the behind the scenes, but I watched, I watched this one. every single one. I loved it. They interviewed that, that kid actor. He act. And I know it sounds dumb now. He acts nothing like Eamon. I was mm-hmm. like, like, Leanna, you talk about transformative, right? Yeah. That kid did a hell of a job. In because... general, I think I'm always the most impressed with child actors Same. if they actually act. Because like, I don't actually expect act. Because like, if I'm Thrones. just like, you're a kid who's just being a kid in the show, that's all I expect. If you actually rise above that and are acting, I'm like, well done, youngster. <laughs> like Damon's poor daughters that get nothing to do but stand Aww. there they and cut like, the cut. hug. Why did they cut the hug? Yeah, yeah the that hug was cut choice. was interesting because <laughs> I was a defender of the cut because I said clearly like the showrunners yeah. have something that like they're saving that sympathetic moment for another time. And the moment was when he's with his brother and he's sitting on the throne. Right. I think like him helping his brother on the throne is like, that's the moment. The, they wanted. the crowning was not planned. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Cause it's the most iconic for me, the most iconic well, moment. At least of the certainly show. one of, yeah. Now my problem, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to my defense of defending them, cutting the hugging scene. The thing that pissed me off about it is I knew that it was on Twitter. I thought it was just a leak from somebody else. HBO released it. And I said, no, 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 You don't get to release that. You cut it. It's cut. I don't like that. You know what I mean? Stand by your decision. Make him, you know, seem heartless. And I wonder if they did that to gauge reaction to plan for season two, to be like, so are people 
want to see more of him being cold or want to see more of him being touchy feely. That's actually not a bad. I mean, you're probably right. They're always running some sort of. Agent There's no reason. Like they didn't just release it just for like shits and giggles. <laughs> yeah, for me, like I got a little annoyed by that because like I'm not, you know, I'm a big fan of like kind of sitting by. Oh yeah, I saw this. Apparently, young Eamon broke his hip while filming. Not sure if it was filming related, but still respect. Yeah, there was some. Uh, there was something about. Is this going to be the new? Did you know Aragorn broke his toe? Story. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's the Westerosi version of that. Does Alex have a Christmas tree box behind his chair? Probably. Like, can, can we just talk about this? Like, what, what what are we doing here, Alex? I mean, I feel like Alex has shared before that like Christmas ha- starts in like October thirty first at midnight in their household. So. Well, it's November 9th and the, the shit's still in the box. Um, maybe they have more than one tree. This is just the office tree. Do you think it's and- actually just a pink dread doll? You think it's the pink dread, <laughs> which is a great scene. I la- I I'm still laughing about the pink dread. Like it hasn't not been funny to me yet. I thought it was terrific. And also that dragon pit scene uh, paid off later, didn't it? Where they're like, you shouldn't play with these. These are these are weapons, not toys. <laughs> which like, okay, wait, we should wait till Alex comes back. But like, start thinking about the. It's not a change. Because it's not contradicting anything. Correct. But the adding in of Eamon losing control of his dragon. I f- yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll wait for Alex to get back because it's such a big point. But I'm glad that you have distinguished the fact that it's not a change because I was going brain rot dead hearing oh, people be like, that's a change. It's like, it's literally not. It's more. I mean, content. okay. So like, while I was gone, like in general, like I kept saying how like this, um, is an obstacle and an opportunity for the showrunners taking on fire and blood to be like, this is fire and blood is an outline. And so like, it's up to you. Now you have the creative freedom and the burden of filling in what people actually said in those rooms when this thing that we know happened, happened. That's right. Yep. So like all the times when they were doing that, when they were like, well, it doesn't say this didn't happen. And, or like, well, we have to say something happened. So then they add in and suddenly knowing that it doesn't contradict me. There's tons of stuff like that where like That's all this right. stuff that like um, happens behind closed doors where the history would never say that happened. All the t- conversations between these people that add so much depth and, and perspective on why they chose to do what they did later, which is his recorded by history, like is, is brilliant and well done. Yeah, and also, like, let's say if they did just follow fire and blood, like, the only account that where we hear exactly what happens is Mushroom's account, where he says, you know, that, I mean, it's something, it's absolutely absurd, and it ends with Eamon, like, presenting, um, you know, Luke's head to the daughter um, at Storm Zen or whatever. It, it, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like, okay, are you going to believe Mushroom? Like, do you believe Mushroom's accounts? Like, clearly Always they're false. Always believe Mushroom. I mean, I do love me some mushroom. What he was would also mushroom the, do? He was in the background of one of the episodes, by the way. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was dancing in the background, and they, they uh, uh, Ryan Condell said, "Mushrooms in season one, you just got to look for him." And I, I don't know which episode it is, but he's in the background, like dancing. It's just a little dwarf dude. Really, <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, right. yeah, he's doing. He's just doing. <laughs> so, Alex, we saved this for you. We're going to talk right. about um, the the inclusion of nuance of Aemon's losing control of his dragon. No, stupid. It would never happen that way. We knew that she would say that. We wanted a <laughs> dissenting opinion. <laughs> no, I actually, there's a T in my pocket. Um, I actually really liked that choice, the way that they did that, because one, it goes directly back to what Viserys was telling the audience and Rhaenyra where he was saying how dumb we are to think that we can control dragons in the first place. Yep. Um, So it goes immediately back to that. And you could already see in that scene, freaking strong is panicking. So his his little baby dragons probably feeding off of that energy. First of all, they're flying through a terrible storm. You got this little baby dragon freaking out because freaking (laughs) behemoth grandma dragons, like come here boy, like trying to eat him and just, Clearly, Eamon's messing with him, but at a certain point, uh, what's what's the what's Strong's dragon's name? The little one. Well, I believe you mean Targaryen. Whatever. He's a he's a very it's, strong it's boy. Arax. It's Arax. Arax. Arax is like, leave me alone! <laughs> it spits fire at him. He's just like, all right, now I'm literally just going to eat you. So, like, I loved it. I love that Eamon wasn't just killing him. And Mm -hmm. that he kind of lost control, even though like he was already kind of going a little bit too far because 
Like, what if you accidentally clipped a wing and he dies? Um, Which, like, so in some sense, like, is like um, it's mirroring the scene where he lost an eye because I don't think anyone went into that planning right. to de eye no. him. No, of course. But once you pull the knife, things once are going to get bad. Once you pull the dragon. <laughs> yeah. So yes. Vagar was like, you just burn my face. Like, I'm eating you now. So I love that Eamon, like, of course, they added, you know, the dialogue of him saying, like, no, no. Like, so clearly. He's not going to also that like remorseful, pure acting. There's no accident. there's no dialogue. Just like Eamon actor's face after that happens mm -hmm. when and really he's strong. just like the oh, absolutely. Oh shit you can see face. it on his face. He's like fuck. Yeah, and in the books, you know, he goes back, and Allison and Otto are like, "What the fuck have you done?" You know. Yeah. And, so and I think I started a war. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> I hope it opens with that in season two. <laughs> him landing, him. him landing, and they're just gonna be like, "So how'd it go?" He's gonna be like. Okay, mom, well, I gotta tell you something. I, you can't get mad, though. You can't get mad. I have to tell you something, though. I ran into my cousin. <laughs> Luke's Birkenstocks are just hanging out of Vagar's gullet. Like, oh, my God. I saw Luke. He's good. He's nice. He's healthy. It's like, he so fell. good news is the Baratheons on our, on our side. <laughs> Bad news is we're going to need a side because I started a civil war. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the fact that it keeps consistent with the lore in the books. And I saw people talking, talking a lot of smack about dragon bonding, but there's actually a line in fire and blood that says that dragon bond, like anyone who claims to know how dragon mm -hmm. bonding works in the modern day is a fool. And it's like, it says it in the book because the Targaryens have forgotten all this Valyrian knowledge. So yeah. they, they are trying everything. They, they do the, the calls, they do the eggs in the cradle, mm -hmm. but they just don't know. And they forgot all this Valyrian stuff, which is kind of cool because we see Damon like going through scrolls and Viserys obviously has some sort of obsession with Valyria. <laughs> like there's something about that old time that, that they have a connection to, yeah. um, but they forgot a lot. So bonding doesn't work. Um, the way they think it does and they've lost that knowledge and um, I think losing knowledge through the history of the Targaryens is going to be a thing that repeats itself in the show Luke ran into Vagar's teeth for some Dude, yeah how silly Vagar came up like Jaws bro that scene <laughs> by the way when he lands uh, when Luke lands and we and see Vagar it was like a scene out of Godzilla I love it, it. Also, you just see Vagar's face I feel like ending strikes. So ending good. the season with like okay this is the cause so civil war is okay we're, we're doing it but also we have seen dragon on city dragon on army dragon on individual we have not seen dragon on dragon until yeah. the final episode which is like here's what's to come civil yeah. war dragon on dragon that's what we're doing but yeah. it's all for spectacle guys we got dragons it's the dance of the dragons like there's going to be lots of spectacle. And again, it wasn't just for spectacle. Every oh, scene with a dragon, yeah, even know. though dragons are cool we as fuck, and you could just have a scene that's just showing me a dragon for no goddamn reason, I'd be like, yep. that's very cool. But like every dragon scene had a reason narratively and for the characters, which is why it felt even more cool. Because you were mm -hmm. like, I feel more than just, oh, that looks awesome. I feel, oh, that means so much right now for yeah. these reasons. Oh, man. Eamon honestly claiming Vagar and riding. I was like apprehensive when it started happening i was like is this gonna be like a weird disney scene like where like the kids riding the dragon and it's wild or like a shitty aragon movie yeah that's no. what i was worried about and it wasn't it really yeah. worked for me i really really liked it and there was a and lot the of way they did that. the dragons throughout the show like they really felt like creatures Unique. with weight and size and mm -hmm. like they didn't feel like oh fun oh, there's a it. dragon that will fly like, like it felt complicated off, and yeah. difficult and like heavy and cumbersome yeah. and like they felt real and every the, time they lifted off was just like you could feel the things the would blow weight. away yeah and the way that they climb on board it's not just like oh fun jump on board a dragon it's <laughs> like you there's like ropes there because you can't yeah. just hop they're like huge and like the reins are like this, this it, it looks like a huge undertaking like and you're not like yeah. oh real cash just have a dragon episode one damon pets the dragon snout and it breathes on him and it blows his hair back and i was like ah <laughs> Everything's going to be okay. They're <laughs> taking care of it. Thank God. Can you, uh, by the way, can we just talk about the pilot for just a second and how good the pilot was? Not just because it was good, but mm -hmm. think about how much bias was going in against this pilot. There were people, I would even venture to say maybe thousands of people watching this show with the intent of Hoping hating. It failed. Yeah. Yes. We're saying, fuck this show. It's going to be dog shit. I'm going to go give it a one on IMDb. And that pilot <laughs> won. Yeah over what 12 million people on the debut night i mean it's insane okay. to think about and, and the audience grew almost every single week 
I was sitting in the basement with my wife because we, I mean, Game of Thrones was like a phenomenon, right? Everybody tuned in Sunday night. Like you would skip football for it when it was on. Yeah. It was always an event. And I would watch every single episode with Kylie on the couch, like as soon as it came on. So getting to sit down and do that again with like some hope and optimism. And as soon as the theme kicked back in, I was literally just like, <laughs> dude me too in the i do wish though that the opening credits were more like recognizably a family tree i wish I it was even... just the same shit from game of thrones like they could have just i, I, I would have been fine with it i, I didn't even care about the intro i was like i don't know what's happening there's blood everywhere um but i'm jammed with the theme. yeah <laughs> you just need the theme music that's all i needed yeah in some ways uh um, which now... if we're gonna talk about music the new music that was written for the show was also very good raymond don't miss Nope, he don't. He's miss. my favorite screen composer, so like I always think that. But I was like, okay, but you wrote some real hits for Game of Thrones that are like recognizable. Can you do that again for a different show that feels different and still in keeping? And he did. Yeah. It was so good, bro. Whenever Viserys is walking to the throne, King Viserys, you know, first of his, and I'm like, oh my god. And then the music starts kicking in. I'm getting chills thinking about but, like, it. It was the, the theme... best. Like the theme music that is like for Rhaenyra that every mm -hmm. significant moment in Rhaenyra's life plays. And it's this like yes. feminine vocal with this like deeper bass, which is so like, that's Rhaenyra. She's like this girl, but who's also this like warrior, you know, wants to be king mm -hmm. person. And like, that's a perfect piece of music. And the way that they play it in these significant moments so that by the time they play it, when she gets the crown, it feels like <sighs> um, it's like a Pavlovian response. You're like, this music means epic shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> so good and then they open the show with her like flying in mm -hmm. on the dragon and it looks good and they're playing that song and the wedding like... music the way the wedding music was like faster and harder and faster and harder and the way you felt these people like dancing mm -hmm. and like all the like political that's why the wedding scene i love it so much because of like the political machinations and everyone's in yep. the same room and the way that that the viserys is like obliviously trying to eat his dinner and struggling <laughs> so like nice. that's Poor like guy. it's so good and then we kind of ruined it with like the random murder that is yeah. not addressed <laughs> it was like okay no that is not cool i would almost say though that the good part of that wedding is more memorable like whenever they're dancing i mean it is it, it is really kind of happy memorable. and otto's clapping and allison's smiling oh, oh at then... the dinner yeah Oh, so here's a question. This is a theory that I've seen online, and I really like this. No, Eamon is not the Night King. No, that's the most ridiculous. Yes, he shit. is. He has a blue eye. <laughs> the most ridiculous shit I've ever. Found. And he's got a he's got a chin for days. Well, the reason that Eamon is not the Night King is because Viserys is the Night King. <laughs> oh yeah, right. true. Let me tell you. I hope Eamon's a Night King, and I hope that they do it just to piss everybody off. I think it'd be so fucking because it doesn't really it matter. Be so like dumb. it literally just doesn't matter. Yeah. So like for me personally, I would think it would be funny. But when they're at the dinner and everyone's getting along, and we see like Otto joking and stuff, I have heard that it was told like the idea is, is that it's from Viserys's perspective, and he's hallucinating because as soon as he walks yeah, out, everyone's that. faces drop. Yeah, and it's like. If that is what they intended, and I don't know if it is, that is some next level. That would be. Shit. Sick. I mean, I suspect that, that like I like that reading of it, but I'm pretty sure that we're the yeah. showrunners intended it to be that people are putting on this face. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I think even in Fire and Blood, they're supposed to get along for that dinner yeah. until Eamon, you know, says to my strong nephew. Oh my god, it was so good. Like, he was just like, <laughs> so good, strong boys. I'm like, fuck yeah. They're, 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 they were taunting him though with the pig. You know, that was even a throwback. Like, I don't think that was, was a throwback. Pig. Yeah. Because he, he didn't get a dragon. He can have a nice flying pig. The fucking pig. I actually forget the pink dread. Was but on like, the it was mainly Aegon that was the instigator for the pig thing. Not yeah. the, not the pig Rainier boys. Boys. I think you're being biased. Still, they brought it back to make fun Legit, of Legit. They were too young. A <laughs> Aegon was the ringleader. <laughs> oh, man. Aegon was an ass. Still oh, is. Is an ass. I Should literally... we talk about all the times that uh what's her face? Helena was prophesying like oh. pretty uh I love reliably. that little weirdo. <laughs> I love that she's a dreamer. I think it's such a good addition. And like for the things that are coming for her, they ought to give her some screen time. They ought to they ought to let us <laughs> love her a little bit. She's like the one good person. Out of all of this, mostly because she's yeah. oblivious. <laughs> she's like yeah. she is the Luna Lovegood of exactly. <laughs> do Do you all think that Aegon and her kids are actually Aemon and her kids? No. Probably. I'm not I sure. Don't. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's feasible. I think they've done enough 
hinting that it could be but helena doesn't seem like someone that would have an affair that's what i say like i feel about that the same way that i feel about she allison did. and Kristen cole where i'm like i'm not denying that there's interest and yeah. that preference mm -hmm. there but i don't think that she could they've done the nasty the, the kind of person though that was just like this is what we have to do for our family She'd be like okay and I also feel like Eamon, because he clearly loves and respects his sister, would feel that that would be disrespecting her to do that. But didn't yeah. a young Eamon also say something, though, of like, I'll do my family duty or whatever? It was just like, I'm down. Yeah, yeah but like, Aegon can clearly get it up. Like, that's not an issue. Oh, so yeah. like, oh. <laughs> that's what Flea I'm Bottom sure he can me. like land a few on her to make yeah. some babies. Yeah, what about when they went down to Flea Bottom looking for Aegon and then Aemon sees the, the leader of the whorehouse and she's like, oh, you've grown up. And mm -hmm. I was like, that's Ugh. interesting. Like, are they going to come back to that, you think? Because that was like a very specific moment. I don't know. I mean, they, I, he I was talking about how Aegon had brought him to um, yeah. just the way that like Damon had brought Rhaenyra. And, and they definitely added some context to like Aemon and Aegon's relationship of like Aegon being like, you take the crown. And Aemon's kind of like, do I want the crown? It's and like, he... until Kristen Cole showed up, they were like, this is the plan. Yeah. Okay, you yeah. go and I be king. <laughs> How did you guys feel about the chase through the city? Because I I, I, uh, I didn't mind I it the in the moment. I think the chase is kind of dumb, but I like that scene between the two of them where he's like, let me go, mm -hmm. let me go. I don't want to be king, you be king. And Eamon's mm -hmm. like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it put a lot of people in the right spots for the episode, like Eric and yeah. Eric. And I love that they didn't change the names. I love that. I think it's hilarious. So they, um, they changed um, Asha to... What, Yara. 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 Because people won't get it, but like people two twins dumb. that are in the same scenes all the time. The <laughs> Ryan Condell was like, we're not compromising shit. They also, I just read, they literally changed actors. Like who was going to be the, the lead Eric because the one, one of them got COVID. Yeah. And they just, they just switched it. They said, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> um, Miguel wanted to change a bunch of the Targaryen names. He wanted to make them more distinct and more normal. And I guess Ryan Condell was like, absolutely fucking not. Like, we're not doing it. We're you sticking know how to the book. Mad the entire book audience would be. Oh, here's Jerry like, Targaryen. Because like, honestly, if you change the names, the story would still be very confusing for anyone that's not yes. yeah. close attention. It really wouldn't help that much. Like, it's more confusing in the book because you don't have faces here. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd be I don't really get that <laughs> no, confused between yeah. Rhaenys, Rhaenyra and uh, Reyna. Because but like I, I have also, faces. It's yeah. also like part of the point is like they keep naming each other the same damn names all the time. If only we didn't have a bunch <laughs> of Aegons, we wouldn't. Yeah, have there's a problem. lot of like, like multiple Viserys's. Well, the so the chase scene puts a lot of people in the right spot. Eric and Eric, you know, we get that kind of set up. We see this Aegon Aemon relationship, which I think is going to be maybe interesting down the line. But also, it sets up Aegon having a conversation with Allison in the carriage, which mm -hmm. I do think is very, very important. But going back to Aegon, it also sets up Aegon and Aemon being not dissimilar from Viserys and da and Damon in their relationship. That is true, and it yep. and it is a hundred percent on purpose. That parallel is definitely on purpose. Yep. They even wear the same hoodie. <laughs> they sure do. They got it from the same same thrift the shop same down flea store. bottom. Fucking ridiculous. What we're um, seeing that sets up what? So yeah, so the in the earlier uh, early in this episode, they talked about a lot of people talked about how they did not like, and I was on this train until I saw the next episode. But whenever uh, Allison finds out, you know, a Aegon Aegon is to be king, and she's like, my Aegon, when it clearly he thought he thought was talking to Rhaenyra still. Yeah. Right. And I was like, ah, I don't know if I like the dance being started off of that. But now if you think about it with all the full context, this dance was going to happen either way. And the reason why we know that is in the beginning of the next episode, Allison walks in and before she really says anything about like what he said, Otto is like, we've already, like they've already been planning. They're like, we're going to go ahead. We're going to have Aegon's well, well, in also in well in. In, in uh, because like I heard that same like complaint that like oh I don't like that the prophecy gives like Allison like plausible deniability they're like oh she didn't want to go to war but it's just mm -hmm. because of this and I'm like I mean not really because like to to read that from what Viserys just said you have to want to believe that that's what he's saying because Rhaenyra has a son named Aegon like yeah. news flash so <laughs> like there's like everyone's named Aegon so like if she was like legit he just said I want Aegon to succeed me you're like I would. Even if you think that's what he's saying, you can't even be sure which the fucking Aegon he's talking about. So, like, she had to want this to be what he is saying, to be yeah. like, no, this gives me the right. He really did want this. I believe this. He said this is his dying wish. And you're just yeah. like, 
you want that to be true and you always wanted that to be true so you're making it true well she's yeah. self-fulfilling her prophecy be and in in a really important distinction and this is something that is not said in the books is that allison in the show is very pious and she continues to become more and more pious as the show goes on very self-righteous and we even hear damon say you've been removing all this targaryen symbolism and putting up the things of the seven and mm -hmm. as we know some people who you know become extremely religious start to see signs everywhere yep. and start to believe in divine intervention and believing in their own prophecy and that they're important, that, that they might be the one. And I think that that subcontext with the fact that obviously she probably wants Aegon to sit the throne because her dad has now gaslit her into thinking that there's no way her kids can live. I mean, Wait, I want when Westeros, when Westeros is smoldering and uh, I want the force ghost of Viserys to confront Rhaenyra and say, you were the chosen one. You were supposed to bring balance. <laughs> and it just cuts the Viserys burning in the seven hells. And he's going, no, God damn it. Like Rhaenyra is entitled to all the shit she's going to do. Okay. He was talking about whatever Aegon is closer to the listener. <laughs> exactly. Choose and, your own Aegon. <laughs> and I did like the fact that he said, you know, you asked me if it was true. And that's what Rhaenyra had asked him early in the episode. You know, little things yeah. like that. Um, you know, it's a tie into the prophecy. If if you thought they weren't going to tie it into the number one grossing show of all time, you're a fool. Just, How do you feel about it? Do you I'm care? Fine with it. I don't Does care. It bother you? Don't I think care originally, like when they first introduced it, when it was just like handoff of the dagger, I was like, "You're just you're just putting this here to tie into the Game of Thrones." Yeah. But then later, like halfway through, when he was sharing pieces of it with Rhaenyra and then pieces of stuff with Alicent, and never the same thing, I was like, "Okay, mm -hmm. this is actually like furthering the stock, the story." And then here, when it like was like you know Chekhov's prophecy, where they like actually make it be important to this story. Like if Game of they Thrones did didn't exist, this way. prophecy is important to this story, even if mm -hmm. Game of Thrones is a thing you that's don't right. know about, then yeah. that's what makes the difference. It's also thematically valid in the A Song of Ice and Fire canon because George plays with the, the weight of prophecy and the misinterpretation of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Remember we did our read through, we talked about... Uh, I think it was, uh, wasn't it one of Danny's dreams or somebody had a dream and it was talking about a giant crushing winter fell and we were like, what is this? And then we realized it was the uh, Sansa chapter where yeah. sweet little Robin smashes her castle. She made it was snow. one of Danny's visions at the house of the undying. That's right. So yeah. like, it's very interesting how this is being played within the show still. Um, mm -hmm. But also like the, I saw people being like, I loved episode one, but I hated they tied it into the game of Thrones. It's like, guys, it's the, whether you like it or not, it's the number one show of all time. Yeah. Numbers wise. Also, no matter even. OK, I don't hate to break this to you, but like Fire and Blood is a prequel to Game of Thrones. Like, like no, every, these it's are the ancestors in. of those people. Like it's yes. tied into it it's no matter what you do. Game of Thrones, Leanna. It's stupid. <laughs> it is important to distinct that the fact that some people were, you know, George basically confirmed that Aegon had prophetic dreams when he came to Westeros. Yeah. And it was part of the reason why he came. Not the full reason, but part of the reason. Now. The show only portion is the passing down. Mm -hmm. George has never said that it was passing down. Ryan Condell and Miguel said, this is our thing. They ran yeah. with it. George said, that sounds fun. Go for it. So that's not the book canon uh, piece, which George talked about about 2015 mm -hmm. is the fact that Aegon, you know, had dreams, which yep. we know that You're Targaryen's talking about a dreamers. son, right? Of course. That's the only Aegon. That that's the only Aegon. <laughs> that's the one. Aegon the Conqueror, played by Henry Cavill. <laughs> please oh, stop yeah. no henry stop. cavill is the conqueror are you kidding it would be dope he's, listen i know it's a meme but he, he would be sick as the guy i don't I think he's said, a good actor i'm sorry i already said we don't have big <laughs> beefcakes yeah. in westeros okay he can't be a god dude, dude him stacked up he could play a wildling i'm fine with that just have him as an extra and he just gets murdered yes ed, ed sheeran is is a god oh my god <laughs> harry styles is a the conqueror oh no <laughs> Wait, ben, Benny Barnes or whatever his name was. There you go. <laughs> Benny Barnes. Benny Barnes. Benny boy. I don't, Um, this isn't obviously like plot significant, and but I didn't notice it because I never notice like optical anything, like optical illusions or like stuff. Like, I literally never notice it. So I saw it pointed out online. You've probably have seen it that like on the poster that's like on the thumbnail for this live. Yeah. Um, That the eye is the dagger. Is the dagger. Uh -huh. Nice little touch. Did you right? notice that though? Before it I was did. pointed out? I did. I did not. People post my yeah, Discord, Leanna. but I, as soon as I saw it, first I was, thing I saw, I like zoom in. I'm I'm a nerd. I zoom in on everything. I'm like, oh, look at these costumes and shit. And I saw it, and I was like, oh shit, that's a dagger. It's dope. What there's a nerd. A, there's another really subtle song of ice and fire nod in House of the Dragon that Ryan Condell definitely put in there on purpose. So the Night King. 
the lemon gate lemon gate is referred to in house of the dragon so i don't did we talk about this in our read along with lemon gate how danny remembers seeing a lemon tree in bravos with the house with the red door but lemon yes. trees are yes. not native to bravos and georgia yes. interview basically confirmed that we were supposed to pick up on that he was like oh hmm, yeah you guys should probably remember that it's like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. where do lemon trees grow they grow in dorn and there's a scene where Laris is talking to Allison for the first time where he gets introduced and he's talking about some tree or, or plant that grows there and how it doesn't belong. And we think it's talking about Allison, which it does in King's Landing because she doesn't mm -hmm. play the Game of Thrones behind her. I think it's on a tapestry. There is a lemon tree on the tapestry. That's a deep cut. <laughs> it's pretty dope. There's no way there's literally no way it wasn't because it was almost like word for word, kind of like a metaphor for Lemon Gate. And I'm like, Ryan Condell's such a nerd. But you also you know why that scene is a good scene and not stupid is because that scene doesn't only work right. if you know the lemon thing. That's whereas correct. <laughs> the power has so many scenes where you're like, if you didn't know Lord of the Rings, you'd be like, what was that? I, what are we doing? <laughs> Yeah, I think that that's the problem with a lot of fantasy shows that try to stay consistent with the Lord. It's like, how much of it are you supposed to know? Where you don't need to know anything, really. Like, you could just go into this. And that's the same thing like with Game that of Thrones. Too, like, I've said so many times. And that's why, like, again, the prophecy thing, like, it redeemed itself to me when it became clear that if you had never heard of Game of Thrones, you mm -hmm. could just be watching this. And the prophecy is significant to this that's story. Right. And so there's so much about House of the Dragon that like is what's impressive about it is that like it does not rely on you having seen or caring about Game of Thrones. If Game of Thrones did not exist at all, you could just watch this story from the beginning and follow it and care about the story that it's telling about the characters that it's showing you. Like it doesn't rely on outside information. It has outside information. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for it, you can be Jimmy who's like, oh, it's a lemon tree behind her. <laughs> I was <laughs> so like, hyped. It, it doesn't rely on that. It's not the like lemon you tree won't is a get secret it. Targaryen. The lemon tree is um, Lightbringer. It's a Zora <laughs> <laughs> I um I will say that we also only... talk about how like everyone in Game of Thrones is a secret Targaryen, but in House of the Dragon, every Targaryen is a secret Nightwalker or uh, Whitewalker. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a theory. Now listen to this. This is some bullshit. Um, <clears throat> that every White Walker is a Targaryen. <laughs> that Laris is the one who burns summer hall. And you might say, well, that happens like centuries later. Well, yes, it does. But they are convinced that he, because he likes fire. <laughs> yes. This is literally it. This is their theory. So he has a bunch of conversations in front of the weirwood tree that is in King's landing, which isn't in the books, by the way, the weirwoods yeah. are gone. I was going to say that's not even a thing. So people are convinced that he's somehow going to get sucked into the Weirwood network and then oh, he yeah. shows up at Summer Hill and burns it down. It's like the mm -hmm. most ridiculous House of the Dragon theory. Like that's even more ridiculous than the Night King shit. I just figured it out. He's Bran. <laughs> so real question. I mean, no, that's not more <laughs> ridiculous than the people theorizing that Allison's kids are actually Damon's kids. That that Aemon does. Oh, yeah. Damon's I mean, that's done. That's yeah, more mean, ridiculous. Yeah, that's just. I mean, that's just, that's just the casting wishing. choice. Yeah. <laughs> You and Mitchell just kind of looks like Matt. Like Smith, you think that Allison, Goody Allison, mm -hmm. would sleep with David. There's also like, no in justification in, in no. the least for Not that. None. What were you about to say though? Um. So here is a question: That werewood that's placed in a lot of significant Allison Rhaenyra scenes. There's no way that's on accident, right? Probably not. So my question is. Do you think they tie in Bran at the end of this or yes. some sort of like zoom out at the end? Mm -hmm. To what 100%. purpose? What is it him witnessing that signify? Uh, this would be very inconsistent with what we've seen with the tie in so far where you say it kind of stands alone. But I I don't know <laughs> so what's going to happen. Like, how would it how what would Bran care about the Br stuff? That well, what if it's Bran showing us the story and he is the narrator all along? Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I'm going to tell you what. There ain't no way that the werewolf is werewolf. not in every scene. Let me tell you, it's not in every scene. You're <laughs> right. But it is in a lot of the big telling scenes between Rhaenyra and Alicent yeah. in the show from their getting along to where Rhaenyra lies to Alicent. I don't That's know right. what Christian they're going to do with it. Killed himself too. Yes. Something is going to happen with the werewolves. There's going to be some fuckery for sure. There has to be. But Maybe it seems like too big of a one. It's a divergence from the book. There's I no mean, I've seen just a lot of takes that are just like the fact that things are being sworn to in front of it when it's a sacred place. Yeah. 
Well, that's uh, that's actually also pretty. That's a pretty good point, right? That that, that adds some levity to that situation. Yeah, the fact that Rhaenyra is not just saying, "Oh, I didn't sleep with Damon." She's saying, "I swear on my mother's grave in front of this weirwood tree that I you know, yeah. didn't that I'm." Yeah. You know. I mean, maybe it is that. Maybe it's just a significance. Maybe it's just a set piece for people to recognize. Yeah. And maybe we're supposed some to, cool looking trees. <laughs> maybe we're supposed to say this though, like, oh, is Bran watching the whole time? Maybe that's what we're supposed to do, and that's it. That's enough. I'd say the easiest explanation. Well, I mean, showrunners, good showrunners are not dissimilar from good writers. They are gardeners, and they're like, let's stick some stuff in the background of these scenes, and then later we can be like, we planned it all along. When really we just like put it there in case we wanted to do something with it. Now we know what Bran was doing during the long night. He was watching House of the Dragon. <laughs> shit Useless what if it does head. somehow tie into like him knowing that Arya needed to use the dagger and that that's how we so. knew that Aemon because is the Aemon night is king. The night bro, king. bro <laughs> honestly if they did it i'd respect the shit out of it <laughs> i would it i would, would i would be fine with it It would become a gigantic meme Just i would the entire show would be i think i meme. would love it in all a way. faith crushed uh so here's here's something that uh i kind of liked and i don't know if other people did at the very beginning of the show, it's the only thing in the show. And, and Leanna, you were talking about how like we didn't need context from Game of Thrones. There's only one piece that we needed context for, and that is at the very beginning. It says it is however many hundred, 150 years, I think, or something before Daenerys. 170 yeah. something before when Daenerys the, Targaryen. They removed all the text, and it was just like Daenerys Targaryen. And then it shows. <laughs> I know that Rhaenyra flying in, and I kind of loved it. Well, I in felt like, way. I mean, again, like if you've never seen Game of Thrones, you'd be like, OK, there was some shit called Danny and this is 170 yeah. years before that, whatever. But also like it for anyone that has seen Game of Thrones, but doesn't exactly know what Fire and Blood is. This is like good, like, you know, orientation. Yeah, I I kind of liked it because if you forget about season eight a little bit and you just think about like on paper what happened, mm -hmm. it is kind of like. A very sad history and like we're about to go into a very sad history and it almost tracks with it so in some ways i actually really really like that callback also we every yeah. time a dragon flies into king's landing it's not that it burns <laughs> we yeah. could just fly in there real cash just do you think any away. casual viewers are like oh no <laughs> it's gonna burn it the bells <laughs> oh, are ringing <laughs> hey here's a question this is not a real question okay do you think drogon didn't listen to danny and Danny I mean, was like, no, Drogon, face. no. And she, he's just burning King's Landing. That's true, right? That Amelia Clark in that scene right before that happens when she's like, that like she didn't know what she was reacting to, that they didn't, didn't tell her. We didn't see her while she was burning. They actually just left out the audio track of her saying, stop burning everyone. They're innocent people. Please stop. We already <laughs> won. Stop it. And they cut the scene from directly after where she did the <laughs> Eamon face of like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I think me and Matt are going to make that on the bend the knee YouTube just to piss people off because the comments will be so mean. Of course, that's not what they did. <laughs> and then her dying wish was for him to symbolically burn the Iron Throne and then fly away. Oh, do we want to talk about how they, they did the Iron Throne more book accurate? I still wish they had gone the more book accurate. Yeah. Because yeah. that throne is dope. But yes, I did appreciate the fact that they had a lot of melted swords. And, and, and it did look like when they said in Game of Thrones that like it's dangerous to sit the chair, like it didn't look yeah. comfy, but it looked yeah. fine. This I was like, yeah, how are more people not cut up? From the kept that cutting himself. I loved it. And then the wound festering times. and instead of him cutting off the hand and just being yeah. done with it, which is a very good symbolism to him, not just picking an air for a while and yeah. like him never addressing. Well, so the I heard he always ignores the issues. Look at his entire body. Like later in the like later in the season when like they like take his robe off and his back is just like covered in boils. Oh. He's so just like a, he's like I... half a zombie. I obviously haven't spoken to the man, but what I saw online was that Patty Considine when his mind um the reason for all of this is that when he he feels that he killed emma and that he doesn't deserve mm -hmm. to live after that and so then he's choosing he's to kind of let himself, himself die yeah. ever ever since then and they and let him choose his last himself. words yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the show they let they didn't script it so that was improv as well and i i loved it like no even more. the little improv of like because i know it was all over twitter when when he's walking like basically crawling up to the throne and sits down and damon like puts the crown on and it like fell or whatever and he he catches it and puts it on his head like yeah. that just happened 
That but it looked perfect. It's so good. That walk is a top five Westeros TV moment. Yeah. Like, and it feels especially it. significant when, like, in the next, is it the next episode? Well, whatever. But the Damon crowns. Oh, we skip. So the next one is the Green Council. Oh, the one after that. Rhaenyra. The next time we see Damon, he's crowning Rhaenyra. That like yeah. the fact that he did. Yeah. And her crowning was. I mean, every time someone got a crown in this show, it was sick. Oh, yeah. Which also, like, I. Um, I kept talking about in all my like reviews was just how often they use camera angles to like establish dominance in, in scenes and how rarely like they the let Viserys. Yeah. And how Viserys yeah. was always framed pretty not dominant that it was always kind of like on level that like he'd be around people. The cameras mm-hmm. like at a level or down and at Damon, it was always up. I was about like, to say that like on the bridge when Otto's yeah. was in, they walk down and the cameras oh. definitely just like mm-hmm. looking up at him. But in that scene where Viserys is finally like when he like crawls to the to the throne, the camera is angled way the fuck up so that he's like dominating that room finally. But we do have like Damon standing over him and crowning him. And when Rhaenyra gets crowned, they don't have a wide shot where you can see Damon standing over her because he's taller than her crowning yeah. her. They just show her head and they just show his hands. And the next time you see Damon, he's already kneeling. There's never a scene where he's like standing over her and he's like, you know, mm-hmm. above her. Yeah, it's very intentional. Man. Because, like, this like this show is made with care and attention yeah. to detail. That's what I'm saying. And then we get to argue about, like, should Rainey's actually killed them peasants? Like, that's how you know that the show's yeah. good. Like, as far as, like, production and the, and the, and the bones of it. Whereas Rings it, of Power, I watched the first episode, and I was just like, I don't know. Listen, that show's dog shit. Anyway. <laughs> did, but also, I was, this reminded me of the that scene when Viserys calls Alice and Emma, and he's like, Emma, like I'm uh-huh. going to bed. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God, I loved that scene. I felt for it. I know oh. we talked about the first time that uh, Simp Cole got away with murder. What about the second time? Did we talk? Like, I went and peed and got some water. Did you guys talk about that? When he's just like, <laughs> he's like, sir, calm down. It's <laughs> sir sir quit resisting this guy just is a serial killer this, and no one cares just murders this old man on a table and everyone's just like it's uh, fine um <laughs> beesbury right is that his so name so where were we in the beesbury. in the treasonous overthrow that we yeah so, I mean, so and allison he, is like we can't kill rainier that guy is fine fuck it yeah Kristen, you got it but Rainier, no, we can't just kill rainier blood pouring from his face <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I love to oh what's the fuck his name? Graham McTavish. What's his name? Mm-hmm. Oh dude. Wow. Oh, what's he takes name off his show? cloak. But just that scene where he's like Herod West. All y'all, fuck you. Yeah. We are yeah. not doing this. I am not part of this. Yeah, that was amazing. I um I hope that he and I, I know what happens, but I hope that Be- Beesbury just or not Beesbury. <laughs> god damn it this though yes i cannot believe Kristen was training yeah. Lanor's kids i was like how is Lanor okay with this Lanor was just having a good time with carl he didn't but, care like, about that guy shit killed your boyfriend like mm-hmm. yeah but, but he got also, a new boyfriend but also that scene when rainera is like pack your boyfriend we're leaving <laughs> i loved it <laughs> yeah that, that put put your boyfriend in your purse we're out that was pretty rough poor, poor Lanor. Poor Lenor. Oh, what Whatever. do we think about get out of what it. do we think about Lenor being alive? Love it. I like it. It made Love sense. It. You didn't like it, really? I mean, like I lo- in that in the moment, I was like, I'm sorry, Rhaenyra is signing off on his murder when she just had a conversation with him, saying you're a good man. That's so hard to find. And so I was relieved that he was alive. But at the same time, I was like, what was the conversation? We were like, okay, so I know that you're rich and privileged and have a dragon and have a family, and your parents just lost your sister. But what we need you to do is just like fuck off and fake your death. No more dragon. No more wealth. No more being a prince. Your parents will think you're dead and be devastated. But like, it's you should do that for us. Why should you do that for us? Because we want to get married. What, well, I think it is implied that he does get paid pretty handsomely. Um, but like, his dragon get, would know he's alive. Well, see, well, so we think. So you just uh, assume you know dragons. There's just like a lot where I'm just like, I don't. I would like to see what convinced mm-hmm. Lainor to go with this. I think we see Lainor again, and I think that he will replace another character in the story, and there will be some changes from the book. Which will piss off uh, a lot of people online, but I, I think, think we'll dorks. see. It again. Regardless, of, I still dorks. don't understand what would convince <laughs> he's going to come back. Do this. Well, Lanor is is saying how he doesn't really want to attend to the fact that he is a person of a noble house and he wants to go out. And That's very different and... from giving up the life of privilege that he has led. 
Yeah, but that life of privilege comes with responsibilities yeah. that he has no intention of fulfilling. And, and also and just seeing everything it's, it's, still, it's a lot, like, though. And also, like, give up. it is. It is. Here's a like, question. He just though. said that he loves those sons, even though they're not his by blood. That like he loves Rhaenyra. He wants to be there for her. He has a dragon. He has parents that love him. It's just like a lot for him to be like, okay, yeah, bye. So here's a question. Do you think he thought about his options and thought that was the best case? Because if he did not choose to leave, I feel like it's... Wait, Lenor's dragon would be out here burning shit like Danny's dragon. <laughs> Do you feel as if he picked the best of his options considering the fact that it's possible that Damon would have just actually killed Lanor. I see, like, that's the thing that I want the show to fill in for me is like, was he threatened to do this? Did he say, yeah, sounds good. It's just, I was like, I have so many questions about this. Yeah. Um, I, this is a bit of me filling in the gaps. I did feel like Damon, especially whenever he ended up paying that guy it is kind of insinuated that he has a, um also him letting yeah. his parents believe he's the dead is the hardest for me that's because like oh, it's... lena lena just died they just had her funeral well lanor like, is I'm also fake my death lanor is super selfish for yeah. sure um i kind of feel like damon may have used some of the money that he got from his inheritance from the runes from his wife dying to pay um because it's kind of alluded to the fact that he pays that guy for like a death and he needs to be seen yeah. and i kind of like the fact that they talked about the inheritance in the show but they kind of left it up like for interpretation of like which they could have done with the death also <laughs> just left yeah. it up for interpretation no you're 100 percent right i just um, like when he got in the boat and said the sea is always right oh god <laughs> stop do just you know stop. why a stone sinks and a ship floats oh, no. is that it is that is that no. the quote <laughs> uh i had to like, come on i had to i mean yeah. if <laughs> i just think of all the times that like because like honestly when i saw the sea is always right i was like the thing you're trying and failing to be is what is dead can never die and like ain't nothing as metal as the iron <laughs> islands get the fuck yeah. out of here <laughs> yeah nah you're not getting any more metal than that they drown each other <laughs> so metal literally they they're die. like the sea is fucking right <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, the drown god! Eddie, why do we serve the drown god? <laughs> Isn't there a mention of some like a Greyjoy? Like, what's the Greyjoys doing? And they're like, what the Greyjoys are always mm -hmm. doing? Yeah, it was pretty early on, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Also, pretty uh, much every major house gets at least like a reference or yeah, a flag what, somewhere. What about Lannister showing up and being a dick at the hunt? I, just the fact that the Lannisters were introduced at all and yeah. they were immediately just like, they're definitely Lannisters. Like, <laughs> just these blonde I just when he said that he's walking in just like all high and mighty. Like, that oh conversation when he tells um, Rhaenyra that he's a Lannister and she's like, yeah, the lion on your <laughs> yeah, thing kind of gave that away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> Fuck I I really like Corliss whenever he finally comes, you know, Rainey's uh What's gives him that ass the pep the pep talk and he comes in. Also, First, he's Sea like, Snake prequel, so here for that. Yeah, yeah. you know, I saw yeah. some people I'm like, we don't really need that. And I'm like, I Shut would up. love to see Sea Snake. We don't need any shit. of this. We That's just right. want it. We don't need I've Jon Snow. It. Yeah, I'll take I will try anything they put out after this because this shows that, you know, if there's a vision and the right people behind it, it could be really but this good. is one of those like so like they had something to prove because season eight sucks, so this had to be really good. But now they're gonna get an ego and be like, make something shit. And they're like, oh fuck, okay, we have to make something good again. And then they'll make something shit because they have well, an ego. And George did say, uh, it was interesting. He was commenting on the fact that people are enjoying the show and he was talking about the possible other shows, and he was like, Well, you know. Every show has different showrunners and we try to keep things consistent. Like yeah. he was almost like alluding to the fact that like he can't really control whether the shows are going to be good if they start making a bunch at once because he can't work on all of them. Right. He can't, also, so how can't much can they House of the Dragons it? if it's completely different cast and crew? And, yeah. Like, how much can they make the narrative cohesive? Yeah. And I don't think it needs to be. Um, I'll tell you what. The that's thing? the good thing about like House of the Dragon being so far from Game of Thrones that like yeah. you can do almost anything and it has almost no bearing on what happens later because like these aren't elves that live a thousand years that like whatever they're doing they're all well dead and gone by the time yeah. we get to Game of Thrones. The only character that could appear in House of the Dragon is Melisandre. 
Mm-hmm. That's the only character. And some people have speculated that Masaria is Melisandre, and I would not like that, to be honest. Like, I'd be fine if Melisandre showed up. Like, I actually would be okay with that somehow. Yeah. But don't make her Masaria. It's the Please. wrong accent. <laughs> it just doesn't, like, why would Melisandre be caring about the little people? It does. It, it would be a very bad movie. Also, she would have lost her accent by now. Yeah, I just don't think that that would be great. But and I would be would okay. have had to have the necklace on, even though Dan and Dave forgot that that's how that works. Uh, she she definitely doesn't have that on. So we kind of forgot. Yeah, we kind of forgot about the necklace. Um, you know, when one of the stories that they're talking about telling is Nymeria. And if you read a world of ice fire, it's only like a page and a half. The wolf. <laughs> I was going to make that joke, but I was like, I'm doing that too much tonight. <laughs> But it's like this whole voyage of her freeing the Andals and Valyria underneath the uh, slave masters and coming to Westeros. Like, honestly, I think that show, there's like no context for it other than like, you know, what happened. Mm-hmm. I think it could be absolutely fucking sick. Like, I think it could be really good. Talking about the first man, like, yeah, there's could so be much really I just want history egg. that would be cool I want Duncan Egg. I just want Duncan Egg. Give me Duncan Egg and then we can call it a day and you can just the wrap conquering? her up. I, I, I do so, want to. That's all spectacle. So here's a question: Do you think it'd be better as a movie or a show? I think it'd be good as like a special limited series that's on HBO, like but it's like three episode episodes, four episodes. Yeah. yeah, like something that's not supposed to go on for seasons. Like do a Chernobyl, yeah. just have it like this is yep. it. Yeah. This is what you get. Yeah. Limited series are the way. I, I'm I'm a big believer, especially after Watchmen. Uh, I really enjoyed that show. And There's I feel like they can do things. that with like almost all of Fire and Blood because the dance mm-hmm. is like some of the biggest, like this is all the dance. But like a lot of it is more episodic periods yep. of history of Targaryen yeah. history. So they could do a lot of just limited series for just yeah. an entire show about Magor the Cruel. <sighs> I mean, you could. Uh, that show would get canceled. <laughs> yeah, Magor was, uh, he was cruel, I guess you could say. Um, mm. You don't say. That's <laughs> a hot take. <laughs> well, Lillian's analysis, my boy. Like the faith. It are really interesting uh, during the conquest and with Magor. Like, there's a lot of really cool stuff that you could play with there. Um, one of the things that I've talked about with my friend Matt is like talking about the Blackfire Rebellion, but I think you can't do that until you do Duncan Egg because Duncan Egg is like it wouldn't make any sense tied into it. You know what I mean? So, I think Duncan Egg needs to be made. I kind of hope, and and this is just like ideal situation. But there is no like official plan to do that, right? Duncan yeah. Egg has been ordered to be piloted. So they're writing it. But my my concern is, is I do not think that they should put on more than one Westerosi show at a time. I think they should run House of the Dragon for four years and then maybe the last season start Duncan Egg. Have then like have something developed and ready to go, basically to start the year after. And they could even at the very so like as the last season is airing, maybe like air the next overlap it like a little (laughs) bit. But don't do the interest alive. Don't don't do do the Star thing of like, yeah. Every Marvel show, every Star Wars show, just badgering you to death. Okay, so I gave Bookborn a heart attack today because, like, I'm not caught up on Andor. Did you and I terrible? thought that I saw a spoiler that was a, such a spoiler that I was like, if this is true, I will not watch this show. That's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. So I was like, you're caught up on Andor. Can you tell me if this is actually true or if this was like a joke on the Internet? Um, and it was that. Have you guys watched Andor? I have not. Well, it's not. I mean, so it ended up not being true. But so like, you know, Andy Circus is in it. Mm-hmm. So like I got to the episode where he's in it, but I haven't seen past that. So there's like three episodes I need to catch up on. And I saw like a, a post on Instagram or something that was like that moment when you realize that Andor is just like a Snoke origin story. And I was like, are you fucking shitting me? I'm not watching Andor if it's a Snoke origin story. And we already <laughs> Bookborn was like, what? No, I don't think it is. And I told <laughs> I told her what I'd seen and she was like, okay, so I have bad news for you. Snoke was voiced by Andy Serkis. And that's why everyone is like, Andy Serkis is in it. Therefore it's a Snoke origin story. And I was like, oh, thank God. Does that also, (laughs) does that mean that Snoke is also Gollum? Confirmed? Confirmed, I think. 100%. Breaking news? (laughs) Gollum is Snoke. But I, I, that's what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the Disney stuff, Marvel and Star Wars, where like a show getting five million viewers a week is considered like, eh, we might cancel it. Like, yeah. I, we don't need that. And it's just oversaturation. 
Yeah, and Westeros, for what it is, you know, it is wide. There's a ton of stuff there. There's a lot of depth, but mm -hmm. you could absolutely burn people out on it, <laughs> especially the nature of the story. Where Duncan Egg yeah. is a little bit different is that the tone is much lighter, even though there's still severe things that happen. Um, I well, wonder if that will hurt the show. I was about to say, like, think because like for all the reasons that we love Duncan Egg, that might be why it doesn't do well. But that's why Duncan Egg could be... It's so different. Duncan Egg could be like between the heavy hitters, like over the summer. You just do some Duncan Egg over the summer as they're running yeah. Westerosi show yeah. to bridge the gap between House of the Dragon and the Sea Snake or whatever it's going to be. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's not to say there aren't kids in, uh, in House of the Dragon, right? Because I'm thinking of the Egg and how prominent he is as a character, but... Yeah. I guess if they wanted to, you know, muddy the waters a bit. And I mean, we there. say a Duncan Egg is like light and fun. It's light and fun for Westeros. Like, yeah, it's, fair. It's pretty fucking violent. Yeah, like noble yeah, but, people die in the first book. I mean, it's pretty rough. But it's like it's a nice, it's a short and sweet kind of like buddy mm. adventure for sweet the most part. Is huh? like it's, not quite. The okay, word. it's it's all relative. Okay, yeah. I have been uh, thinking about rereading them again I, for some reason it's around Christmas. You? Yeah, it's me so good. never. But I mean, so like what Alex said in the beginning of our chat today was that like House of the Dragon was like, it's Sunday night with his unmissable television. We are like, that's when it's on, we are watching it. We sit down to do that. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't happen if you've got like five shows running concurrently. That's right. Like, oh, I got to catch up on it. Maybe I'll catch up on it as opposed to one thing. And you have to watch that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think I think HBO understands what they have here. So I'm hoping that that will lend itself to staggered releases or like, you know, maybe you could do the sea snake show, maybe like season three, right? If there's four yeah. seasons of house or season three, you put that on in the off season. I think that could probably work and be fine. Um, and I, I agree with you, Leon. I actually think it'd be really dope. I think Steve Tucson is killing it as Corliss. Um, yeah. Just I'll totally own that. If so it's a good. prequel though, is it going to be a younger him? And so not that actor. I don't know what they're going to do and they can play the timeline if they wanted to, but I don't know. It's a good question. There's so many spinoffs that like were going to happen too that mm -hmm. got canceled. Like I didn't know blood moon was a blood thing. moon long night. Yeah. Well, that, that was all about the long night, but I didn't even know that that was like supposed to happen. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, kind of Max John Snow too. from, <laughs> From a super nerdy perspective, the Blood Moon show could have been really cool, but apparently the pilot was a absolute disaster. I just oh, feel yeah. also because like the I don't know the safest territory is prequels because we have completed material for Dunkin' Egg, Fire and Blood, World of Ice and Fire. Like this is stuff that does not need someone to make it up. Yeah, and well, so, like, I don't like the point. idea of going ahead past Game of Thrones. Yeah, Dunkin' Egg. I mean, they're not finished, but they at least have a starting point with the first three. Yeah. And you know, and they are self-contained enough stories where yeah. you don't yeah. feel like it's unfinished if you don't go. Yeah, or, because we know in full context as book readers that it ends at Summer Hall, right? That's where Summer Hall burns. We don't know how, but that's where Egg, you know, dies. That's you know, because Lair is strong. Um <laughs> teleports through the Werewood <laughs> Network. Yes. <laughs> because he likes fire. Apparently. He heard he heard there was a foot fetish convention, and when he <laughs> realizes that that is in fact not true, she just burns the angry. entire place down. He heard shoes were optional. He ends up burning it down. Rhaegar's born. <laughs> Jenny Voldstones is written by Rhaegar. Ah, oh, terrific! Here we go. Poetic. That's Show what George wanted. Up. That's what yeah. George wanted to happen. Get a story yeah. worth it. <laughs> so brutal. Uh. People, people say dumb stuff online. I kind of want to rewatch this show. House of the Dragon? Yeah. I'm definitely going to rewatch it. Before I think I'm going to rewatch it. Yeah. I have to say, I watched the first episode, I think, three times? Definitely twice. And I that episode twice. is so fucking brutal. Like, it's super brutal. I, I watch a lot of violent shit, and I watching that episode, I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> it's tough, man. They do a really yeah. good job of making that shit uncomfortable. <laughs> Just like I was eating during... Panera's second birth <laughs> scene, and I was like, "Don't watch this while you're eating." Nothing folks. is as brutal as that fucking C-section. Literally, nothing in television oh, yeah. is as brutal as that. And that's their opening episode. I was like, "Holy fuck!" This is like, yeah, amazing. I felt that in my chest. I was like, yeah. "Damn!" And then I thought yeah. Rhaenyra in the finale. You know, obviously that's a pretty um, intentional parallel to Emma. Yeah. 
and the fact that she loses um she loses mm-hmm. her kids and then she lost her mother in the first well, of episode. course you know she chose her life over the babies because oh my god that was the dumbest comment worst. i've ever read <laughs> oh my god well, it's almost like, you know, not giving Emma the choice in uh, episode one was super barbaric and horrifying. Well, and then I do think, uh, okay, people need to stop romanticizing Damon because Damon is an asshole. But like the fact that but we did have Daddy like, Damon. but like Viserys being like, yes, choose the baby, you know, do the thing. And mm-hmm. then when we had Damon presented with the same choice, he was like, like hesitant about that. Like he wasn't like immediately like co-signing. Yes, kill the woman. Give me the child. Like, yes, that Damon wasn't keen on that. Yeah, and then Lena teleports. Yeah, unfortunately, don't know how she just yeeted on out of there. Such a good dragon. scene, like her being in front of Agar and yelling Jakars, and the dragon is. Like, I mean, like, like I how love strained her voice was, and just how <sighs> desperate it was, and in the performance of it, I just thought it was excellent. And then her talking about Damon and that we're not meant to be here. We're dragon riders. We're supposed yeah. to like, let's go home. I know you want to see your brother. Like that. That actress did so much for the character of Damon and then so much for Lena as a character. Mm-hmm. It's just a shame that we didn't get one more episode of them together. Like if that could have been split into two and maybe found out somehow to end that with like a bit of a But I mean the same is then true of yeah. Arwen and, and Rhaenyra. They didn't we didn't see. Well, that's the same Rhaenyra. episode. So I would have loved for that episode. I'm saying, but like the, that relationship is equally undeveloped. Yeah. Oh yeah. The relationship with the strong and that was just not oh, so then I think <laughs> but, it's very intentional that they were like, well, yeah. They're neither of them is end game. So that's we're right. just going to be like, yeah. And, and that's, that's what I try to tell people. I'm like, you know, I am coming in with the full context of this, but like all this is just precursor. And yeah. apparently uh, Miguel and Ryan wanted to start this show at episode 10. And George said, you can't, you have to do the first five as a flashback. And they were like, Ugh. like we don't really, and George is like, if you're going to do it, this is how yeah. you have to do it. And they listened to him, which is crazy. Because let's be honest, if I told you there was going to be like five time jumps in season one, you'd be like, eh, like no one likes time jumps. Nobody. Yeah. Um, but they 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 embraced them. And I thought also, by the way, in episode six, which I know some people didn't enjoy them establishing like history on that walk with Rhaenyra and Lenor, And like you're getting gaps filled in of 10 years of history as she walks mm-hmm. to meet Allison. As a one shot scene is so good. Yeah. It was so good. Also, Rainier is a badass for that. Like, oh, I no, did think I'm that no scene one. was like a tad ridiculous. It was a little melodramatic. It was, a I was like, bad. we're opening with like, okay, okay. Yeah, and then she does the walk, um, and then the after her. Oh, God. so. <laughs> Um, I did it for some reason. I don't know why. I thought it was super endearing whenever Viserys was there, and he was like, "My daughter," and he like hugged yeah. her. I was like, oh. <laughs> Also, like, no, see, no issue with the grandkids. Looks like, okay. And Allison is like, looks good to me. <laughs> and then you tell her, she's like, so they don't look anything like that. Oh, I had a horse once. And it was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give that man an Emmy. Right. Yes. Oh, my God. But I mean, this is really, I mean, I did have problems, like, with, like, how allison was like depicted it like the the older allison was depicted at first where she was just like saying treasonous shit in front of people in front of the series in public like she said you want to marry these kids together over my dead body just in front of everybody i'm like you can't do that he's the fucking king like i, I mean she also tried to stab renera in her face which I, and everyone was again, just like ah let's go to bed let's go to bed like she is the heir to the throne and you just threatened her person like but the the Andrew ruling voice Wood. in this is Viserys and he mm-hmm. always backs off like he yeah. never finally addresses this shit and then well actually that's not true eventually he does say if i hear it again like you know you're losing your head yeah. um but he keeps putting it off and putting it off um i do think they may have went a little far trying to prove that he was a weak king with allison specifically in episode six because i think it's on the stairs in front of like yes. just random that's what folk. i'm saying like if in private she was like argumentative i'd be like sure but she's in front of the entire court is like naysaying the king i'd be like mm, no yeah he should have done a bobby b and smacked her right across the face <laughs> i'm like I, I, I don't think the series would, but like in public like that, I don't think Allison would because she's too much of a goody goody to yeah. do that mm-hmm. in public. But that's yeah. when you need a Bobby B to honor her with a nice little smack. <laughs> I'll honor you again. <laughs> so good. But you God. know, we haven't talked about Otto very much. And Otto is kind of like 
Awesome. Scumbag. He, we need more from that from, from him, though. Like, and I hope that we get more dialogue because now the show is going to slow down. I mean, there's a lot of spectacle stuff coming, but it's going to slow We're down. We're getting the bit. dance, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, it's going to dance. But like, you know what I mean? Like, we don't know more time jumps in this shit. And Otto is a big player. So I want more dialogue because that actor, uh, whatever his name was, he was in Little Nicky, which is Reese. bizarre to me. Um, yeah, he, that dude definitely uh, needs more screen time for me. He's definitely For like the sure. little finger of this show. Yeah, he really yeah. is. And slime, slime ball, absolute slime ball. Which is why, I mean, this is why people are willing to overlook literally everything Damon does because he calls Otto a cunt. And you're like, yes, I'm on his side. <laughs> yeah. And I love <laughs> I don't that need they, to hear anymore. <laughs> the bridge scene, and they go back to it in the last episode. I love that. I thought that was great. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else with Otto that I really enjoyed. I mean, him and the Masari stuff was okay. I think it has more to do with the stuff coming in the later seasons. Yeah. I mean, all of his conversations with Allison were great. Um, you know, him forcing her to wear her dead mother's dress to seduce a 50 year old man that's dying oh, in grayscale that or whatever great. is pretty, pretty, pretty gross. Not, not great. I mean, <laughs> in gross. fairness, when Allison is first like with the series, like he's still a pretty virile, handsome man. Yeah, it's that's like, true he starts declining rapidly after that. But like at first he's like, he's old for her, but like fine. And he made a toy city. I mean, he made oh. a little model city. I love all the memes that are like, every time <laughs> Allison says the crown can't afford this, where all the money went <laughs> yeah. to the Lego city. <laughs> but have you seen my model? <laughs> <laughs> Which again, guys... I think when, when Damon and Rainier first go into his chamber after years and years, and they just like, look at this expansive model. And now he's just like comatose in bed. And they're like, <laughs> What the fuck has been going on here mm -hmm. while we've been gone? <laughs> what? His fucking Legos. His Legos. His connects. Uh, Did you guys know Reese from anything prior to this? From a I didn't know he was the guy from Little Nicky. No. <laughs> oh no! As what? He played. Um, he plays Mycroft Holmes in Elementary. Okay, because as soon as I saw him, I was like, "Oh, oh shit!" It's the kicker from the replacements, and I was like, "Oh my god." Little Nikki and the replacements. I, I didn't know until after and someone said it and I was like, oh my God, that dude deserves an Emmy for being able to play those right. that big of a range of roles. Pimping your daughter to the king <laughs> is the go-to move for Reacher Lords. That's why they did the uh, did Marjorie as well. Yeah. Super stoked about Eamon losing an eye and getting a dragon. Yeah. Whenever he shows his cards to Allison, finally, mm -hmm. like straight up, I thought that that was a, I forgot about which that he scene. only does after he's like, okay, so you do have the balls for this game. Let me level with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that quite a bit. It's like she went from being his pawn to being his co-conspirator. Yeah. That uh, he invited her a seat at the table. Yeah. Reese is Luna Lovegood's father. What? I don't know. What? That's crazy. And now he's Luna Lovegood's grandfather in is, House of the Dragon. Yeah, this is this is some wild <laughs> shit. Yeah. I mean, I feel like also, again, not to just constantly shit on Rings of Power. What do you mean? Like, That's all you've been doing for months. <laughs> it's like your thing. There's, there's no shortage of that on the internet right now. But it's just so, okay, no spoilers for Rings of Power for anyone who gives a shit about Rings of Power. But, like, there is a character that is a master manipulator, or at least should be, and isn't. And Otto Hightower is how you write a master manipulator. I'm just fucking saying. By giving I, them scenes that show them doing the thing that they're supposed to be good at? Yeah, it's it's a wild concept. Yeah. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I think there's also a lot of people who think that, like the politically savvy or the snake or spider type character has to say a lot when actually they just have to say the right things. It doesn't need to be a ton of lines. In and fact, even they are more likely to keep silent and gather information and use it to their advantage mm -hmm. than to actually like come out. When you come out and say stuff, you're making yourself vulnerable. I would love to see how many scenes there are with it just cutting to auto and him not saying anything yeah. like him just looking or on. just being like, like yes. Well, because Viserys will say stuff and he'll just be like, like this, that, that little <laughs> nod, you're just like, oh, yeah, he knows what's up. Did you feel like he did have legitimate love for Viserys? Because I did, actually. Yes. I, I felt a little bit that he was being genuine, but he 
more so cared about like what happens once he's gone. Yeah. When I you say like always you did, say love he, for Viserys, I don't think love. But I like think I don't he, think he didn't care. I think he had a legitimate like loving friendship and like brother kind of love for Viserys, but couldn't get out of his own ambitious like way. Yeah. Basically. I think more so that like he thinks Viserys is a decent guy, could even Ooh. be a decent king. It's like he's like fine with Viserys. Like he's he likes the guy well enough. But it's like but I, you're, I need to use you for my ambitions. Yeah, I mean that's definitely always there. But I think there was legitimate, if yeah, if not love, definitely like a deep care and concern for him. Leanna, I just for fun wanted to look at your Rings of Power videos and the top. They're doing great. Five, yeah, the top five <laughs> videos on your channel for views are all Rings of Power. I told her that when she started doing them, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> And People you know what? I, I did it on a, not on accident because I obviously had to put on a like record a video, but like I didn't plan to cover that show at all. And then like episode three is when but I started it was for doing the algorithm. It. No, it was like I literally I didn't even do episodes one and two. Episode three, I texted so many people all the dumb shit that happened in episode three. And I looked at all the texts that I sent and I was like, I could just like say these texts in a video right? and just was like, fuck it. Maybe no one will watch it, but it's an easy video. I can just say this. And then apparently people liked it so i kept doing it that's why it ends up being funny too though because like <laughs> i think it was kyle kyle thought it was either i was talking about rings of power or empire of the vampire kyle was like you're way funnier when you don't like something that you're reading or watching i was like yeah i was like that's because my natural like sarcasm just comes out and i can just shit on something relentlessly it's a shame we couldn't hate house of the dragon no, I know. Just I did kidding. have so many comments. I had so, so many sad. comments on like people that like found me through Rings of Power, and then I would post a House of the Dragon video like directly thereafter because every week that was the cycle, and like they would see Rings of Power, and then like it's just jokes, and then they would see my like forty-five minute analysis of House of the Dragon, and they'd be like, "The tone shift is wild." <laughs> you are just like deep analysis. Let's discuss in depth, like the show versus just like this is dumb well yeah because it, it it does get frustrating to have to address inconsistencies right like like yeah like like minor things um it, it could be uh very soul zapping and kind of take the spirit out of things which i actually didn't like hate rings of power so much as i just felt apathetic towards it which is not what i want to feel towards middle earth so i just gave up um you know my mom, she didn't watch any of the show. She watched my videos when they started taking off. We're <laughs> like, oh, good job. And so then she watched just the season finale of Rings of Power. Only that. And she was like, that was so boring. I don't understand how you watched eight episodes of that. <laughs> so there, boring. There's someone on YouTube. I don't know who it is. I just saw my homepage. And it says, I watched the finale of House of the Dragon and try to figure out how we got here. And I'm like, man, I bet that was a trip because like they never would have guessed that there had been 20 years that passed in season one. I just I mean, I think I said this to my brother and to Hillary that like just having these shows simultaneously that like how Rings of Power feels like the Bilbo quote about feeling like too little butter scraped over too much bread where there's just like nothing there and they're just like spreading it to barely eight episodes because they might be able to stretch the story that far and house of the dragon is like a burrito that you can't actually like fold over like it's yeah. too much stuffed in there and they're trying to get as much plot into every single second as they possibly can and like seeing those shows show simultaneously is just insane yeah <laughs> yeah it makes you just kind of wonder like what if they had given the young cast an entire season? You know, like I, I think you could have done it. I think you really. I could think have. if they had known how much of a hit this was, they would have. Yeah, it, I think one thing that is a little tough, and people have disagreed with me on this because uh, I've seen a lot of people say that they feel like the mid season's harder, but I do believe that if you end the season one with like Millie, right. And, and all the young actresses and actors, and then you come back for season two and it's a whole new cast, you have a, a bigger chance because of the time between the, the seasons, like a year and a half to two years. And then it's a whole new cast. You could lose people. Yeah. It's almost that. more jarring. I, yeah, that, that, that's my belief. I, yeah. I kind of feel that way. Except for Chris Cole, who's just chilling. Do Damon and crispy. Fine. They're fine. Even they Viserys, cut Damon's hair. <laughs> they did cut his hair. He might've had a wrinkle put on his forehead <laughs> when the makeup uh, tent. Um, 
But I think the. But I also band... feel like Damon is supposed to be considerably older than Rhaenyra to begin with, whereas like Kristen is like more around her age to begin with, and the yeah. fact that he didn't age up and she did, you're just like now he looks younger than her. Like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that is true. Matt Smith does look a little younger than Rhaenyra in the show towards the end, huh? Or at least at the same age. Like they're way closer than it would appear, that it should appear. I should say. Um, I think the band aid rip off mid season is a little rougher. But I think yeah. that the bridge, like, it, it, and you can see it in the ratings, like, in, in, the, in what people gave stars wise. Like, six was a, a dip, and then seven, eight, nine, ten. I just, highest. I also think, like, it's not even that we got a jump. It's that there was certain things about the characters that felt so, like, I needed, we went from A to C, and I needed B. Like, mm-hmm. we just needed one more episode or more scenes or make each episode an hour and a half. I don't know what the fuck you need to do. But it was just yeah. that, like, going from Allison to being like, I just found out Rhaenyra might have lied to me to, like, the Allison that we see in episode six, who's just, like, mouthing yeah. off to the king and is like, Rhaenyra's a cunt and I'm on team person calling. Just like, I need to see point B in between these two things. <laughs> that was like t- year five, but we got a 10 year <laughs> time jump. So that's what that was. <laughs> Yeah, and in some ways it's kind of cool because and it's one of the things that separates it from Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is a very close, like, you know, almost third-person perspective over the shoulder type deal. But with Fire and Blood, it's more of a historical epic, you know, and, and yeah. it, it kind of feels that way with the sweeping time jumps, mm-hmm. um, which is a bit of a brave decision because I don't think the common media consumer in America is used to that type of thing. But I mean, everything about House of the Dragon, the names are the same. It's all politics, t- massive time jumps. It's the whole thing. Like on paper, every executive would be like, no, zero percent. Jeff Absolutely Bezos never. checklist would not have been met with this show. <laughs> yes. Like, but we're going to have titties and dragons. OK, you can run it. <laughs> yeah. Ten, I'd ten love to see Jeff Bezos checklist for Rings of Power. I can pull it up. If you want to see it, what, what he used to give them. Let's see. No, he used to literally make, and then not anymore. They got rid of it. So that's why it failed. Guide. 12 step guide to making an iconic TV show. I don't think they applied this to rings of power, but these are the 12 things that Jeff Bezos. This is back when man in the high castle was on, which was a yeah. good which show. And then, good. It, yeah, I like that show. Um, apparently he made them change a bunch of shit. So here's number one. There's 12 of them. Uh, number one, a heroic protagonist who experiences growth and change. Two, a compelling antagonist. Number three, wish fulfillment. Number four, moral choices. Number five, diverse world building. Number six, urgency to watch next episode cliffhangers. Number seven, civilizational high stakes, global threat to humanity. Eight, humor. Nine, betrayal. Ten. I just like the global threat to humanity precedes humor on the list. Like these, next to each other. These last three are the best. Number ten, positive emotions such as love, joy, and hope. Wow. Negative emotions such as loss and sorrow. Yes. Number twelve. This is the final one, the most important. Oh. Violence. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know the that show missed a lot of those checklist points. Gotta say. Weirdly, I think House of the Dragon nailed all of those on yeah. every episode. Did you think there was enough humor? In House I of the saw, Dragon? Yeah, I saw some people say they wish there was a little bit more like Tyrion-esque type of I mean, humor. Damon was the like comedic person. I think there was just enough. I mean, it was it's supposed to be a little bit more serious, but there's definitely enough of like the the shitty little like, sarcastic comment. It's not like people aren't going around telling jokes, like it's not the MCU. And Game of Thrones also really wasn't. Tyrion was kind of funny, but it was a pretty serious show. People, I think, forget that. It's more of like if you watch earlier seasons of Tyrion before he was just saying dumb shit all the time because the writers (laughs) ran out of ideas like his is his overall like persona and his attitude toward and like line delivery was funny at times. It was also still pretty much only Tyrion. Yeah. So like here too, like Damon says some funny shit sometimes Mm -hmm. like that's it same thing yeah and i think yeah. it's okay not to be a balanced show with humor like a lot of people a lot of people talk about balance but i think it's sometimes whenever you try for balance you can ruin the intention of the story or the art mm-hmm. um i think it's actually overstated a lot and if you want a really good example is marvel are very balanced movies they're very balanced some uh, of them are not well some of them, so good like, marvel movies i'm thinking cool. like the big stuff from earlier on yeah. right like most but, recently they've gotten away from i'd that. say yeah um, yeah, uh, they got to a certain formula where like 
Thor Love and Thunder is a dumb fun movie, but even that movie, well, like Taika Waititi went way too far yeah. off the deep end of like, I'm just telling jokes every five fucking seconds as, and you can't stop I, me. As far as I know, Taika Waititi did not want to make another Thor movie, he but didn't. he was contractually obligated to, so he was like, fuck <laughs> yeah. it. I'm making this shit. Literally, that's what he did. I was just like, I'm just telling jokes and doing dumb shit the entire time. But there's also, there seems to be a fear in a lot of Marvel stuff of like letting a serious moment just stay and be serious. They have to like cut it with a joke. Nudge, nudge. Like House of the Dragon doesn't ever do that. Um, Funniest moment in House of the Dragon was either Pink Dread or whenever Allison is like, you guys want to go look at the tapestries? And Viserys is like, like, what the fuck? The tapestries get a load of this well, gal. Right. I think it was on Twitter or Reddit earlier today. So it was just like the moment when the house, like when the Dance of Dragons started, it was that scene when she's like, you guys want to look at the tapestries? And they're all just like, <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> it was also such a, but like that moment actually, like as always, the show was layered because yes, that was kind of funny, but it also was developing how much Viserys yep. cares about Damon and how much he's like, that's my brother and I want to mm-hmm. be with my brother and he's back. And I don't care that I banished him and he's back because like we're hanging out and it's like old times. And Allison's very annoyed in that scene, and you can see mm-hmm. Damon acknowledge it. And he's well, like, that's sexual oh. tension because that's why her kids are actually Damon's kids. Oh, that's the start God. of it all. That there is literally no subcontext. <laughs> <laughs> like I've seen some people. I wonder... honestly don't know when they've been present in the same vicinity long enough to have like consummated anything. <laughs> I saw some people say because of the timeline changes that Jace could technically be Crispy Cole's kid. Oh my God, I, don't, I saw that so much. I don't believe that personally. Um, his hair is straight, unlike his younger brother who has curly hair. Therefore, per Westerosi paternity testing, where the hair is what matches. We did Crispy a short Cole's about it <laughs> on Bend the Knee. It's like one of our most successful shorts. It has 300,000 views. <laughs> people love that theory. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. I don't think so. Um, that would make more sense, though, than Allison fathering Damon's kids. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I, just, I just went to the House of the Dragon subreddit, and it's a picture of Damon sleeping. It's because how I sleep knowing that I won't be forced to listen to my Saria talk for two more years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Masaria. You know, they just need to have more negative emotions like loss and sorrow in the show. <laughs> the tapestries of orgies. Yeah. Alice, they want to watch porn with Damon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if people caught that, but those tapestries were graphic. <laughs> Allison's a little freak, huh? Is that what we're getting at? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> great show. It was a great show. So I know we had mentioned it initially. Was there a casting choice we didn't like? Like, that was actually like. I'd say bad or like a character was not convincing because I feel like the closest for me would be like Luke and uh, who's the older one. Jason and Luke were forgettable. I would say they were forgettable, but like when they aged them up, they were just kind of like doofuses. It is almost hard. But Luke still made me cry. Yeah, Yeah. Luke Luke did that on his 15. They did Jace dirty though with that wig. Because he's like a good looking guy and has a normal ass haircut. And they were just like, slap this bowl cut on him. <laughs> Dude, and they, there's memes about his posture when he's trying to leave. <laughs> like, Did you see never... that shit? <laughs> uh... it, it's honestly so hard to say that like they didn't do a good job or something because they're yeah. surrounded by Emmy level performance. But it's also that I feel like we find the the Allison kids to be memorable because they're assholes. And they do <laughs> like... Like That's they true. do like villain shit. Whereas yeah. like Rainier's kids, they're just nice. They're just yeah. good. They just try to be good sons. Just like Lauren that Valerian. So like, the, what do you, I mean, what kind of acting is being, it's not memorable when you're just a nice guy, which is yeah. what they are. Yeah. Luke and plus winning me over in that last scene though, like when he goes to Storm's End and he was like actually just trying to stand up for himself a little bit. I was like, and even, the, I mean, go, uh, Luke. Jace too, when, um, when Rhaenyra deputizes them to be like, I'm having a baby, you be my voice in the room yeah. right now. And Jace goes in is like, you're not doing shit without Rhaenyra's say so. Yeah. She's the queen. I was like, yeah. There was a scene after that that I thought was a little odd. And it's the only thing I didn't like in the last episode was whenever Damon like takes him and then threatens the two Kingsguard with the dragon with Cyrax. Yeah. And it's like, why? asking for their loyalty it, it was weird it was a little weird it's like this is you know watch this and i i just thought it was a little yeah. odd i don't know what about it i didn't like but it just didn't feel like it fit the episode cyrax slowly crawling down there though was bad <laughs> dude worm boy is the best 
I mean, I guess to me, it just felt kind of like Rhaenyra is like, hey, boys, I'm in charge. This is how it's going to go. And Damon's like, this is how it's going to go. Yeah. And it's, it's like the which and it ultimately kind of doesn't matter who sides with them. Cause I don't know, don't I? <laughs> like, yeah. And is that Damon's way like him showing the guards? Was that actually a subtle hint to Jace? You know, I mean, it's just like all around. He's like showing the guards what's up while also showing the kids. This is what takes to rule. This is what's up. This is check the out Noodle Boy. <laughs> Dragon so sick. Um, th- number one challenge in season two is whoever they cast for Craig and Stark has to be absolutely one hundred percent killer because Craig and Stark is just such. Bring a- back Sean Bean. That's, That's what I said. I'm literally about to make the joke. He's older now. Just put him in, dude. I would mark out. I would lose my mind if but then Sean everyone Bean- knows that he's gonna die because he dies in everything. <laughs> or like- get that actor who played Benjamin. I'd be down. But he's already on on Rings of Power, so I was about to say he's already at R, so you can't do that. But but young Sean Bean is also on Rings of Power. <laughs> now he tends i would absolutely love um for them to cast somebody that is powerful in the role of craig and stark and i have confidence because they casted a baratheon and i was a little nervous yeah but my god he delivered the fact that he couldn't read was the funniest shit ever hey <laughs> maester do this do this beta shit called reading for me i loved it i was hired to lead not read <laughs> <laughs> so good the floyd mayweather of westeros can't read it all. Another challenge for season two is everyone marches to war. What will non warriors be doing? Like Alice, at least scheming and shit uh, in a room with Otto. <laughs> if I auto her and Laris, no, or, not Ben Barnes. <laughs> not to mention, like, you know, if anyone's watching the Sam Red Fire and Blood and, and you were kind of missing the scope of Game of Thrones with like the different settings and the different places in Westeros, we're going to be seeing the veil. We're going to be seeing I, I think the opening scene is most likely going to be Jay's flying into Winterfell. Yep. That, that's what I imagine, even though he's supposed oh, to go to the veil theme, first. The theme's going to come in. Oh, it's going to be so sick. Um, But we, you, you, we'll see the river lens. We'll see all these places. So um. I think it, it, it's going to be really nice to see that branch open. And that's why the show is going to feel, I think a little bit more methodical at first, at least. Um, but Alice is going this to a be, thing that you have seen the theory of Damon singing to Vagar to kill Luke is the, no, that's not Vagar. That is Vermithor. Vermithor yeah. is Viserys's dragon that he never wrote after uh, black dread was down. Yeah. Yeah. People think this shit though. Oh, I see what he's saying. He's saying people think that, but obviously it's Vermithor. I'm sorry, I didn't read it all the way through, Chris. One, Singing three, to Vagar to kill Luke. That's some 3D chest. Right it's there. also like, okay, let's say, okay, let's say that is Luke's dragon he was singing to, which it isn't, but let's say it was. Why the fuck would Damon want to kill Luke? Like, what possible advantage could that possibly be to Damon? That's, oh my god, people are so dumb. To I'm believe sorry. to believe that and in the way that it happened. That is some um, Hal Brand on a raft in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> that would be as dumb as people think Rainy's coming through the floor was, even though it wasn't. Yeah. Yes. Like that would actually be that. I mean, dumb. it's amazing, right? That people are like, Rainy's coming through the floor makes no sense. But then they come up with shit like, Aemon is the Night King, and, and <laughs> Damon is actually <laughs> fucking Allison, and Aemon is his son. And so that ridiculous. means that Damon is actually the father of the Night King. <laughs> Dude, if they cast Ben Barnes as Craig on Star, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> I'm gonna be so pissed. Favorite dragon, Vagar. Vagar is just such a behemoth. That shot of him just hanging out right there at Storm's End. Is... That shot, the one of yeah, I like the one in the clouds. He's oh, gonna, and Arax is like this little this little baby, and he's just completely just encompassing. Him. But Seraxis probably is the coolest design. Yeah, Seraxis is sick. Noodle boy. Just that like. wormy ass, like lanky dragon. It's like unsettling. He's almost moving like a snake. Just I don't know. He's weird looking. Yeah, and Vagar has that like sea monster feel to her. Yes, like there's a fucking throat. Yeah, the throat. Yeah, dude. Oh man, Vermis it's like a big ass too. whale. Do you think we'll see uh, Cannibal, the dragon that like eats other dragons? It's a wild dragon because they because remember Damon Probably. was like, "There's other dragons we can tame." And I'm like, oh shit, they're gonna show Cannibal. Where I feel like they will. For where HBO was spectacle. Cannibal though? I, you know what? I can't say because I don't know. I actually am not sure where at. Because I know it's it's in the story, but yeah. I don't know where. I mean, it wouldn't be unsurprising to show that. That would be sweet. 
Dude, Cannibal could be cool. Maybe Eamon's going to come back and be like, look, it was Cannibal. Cannibal <laughs> flew in out of nowhere and ate Luke. It wasn't You're never going to believe this. <laughs> wasn't me. It I was, was chasing him and trying to dismount him from his dragon in midair. And then another dragon came in. The way I describe that scene is like, if you've ever had a friend or brothers or, or you know, a sibling or whatever. Yeah. And like, I've never had a friend or it, brothers. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. Don't listen, my brother. <laughs> what, it, it's much like this. Like 95% you're, you're, of the audience just went, aw. Like you're fighting over something. And then, like, you decide to take it one step too far, so you like punch them, and they're like, yeah, and you're like, and then oh, they grab shit. a knife, yeah, yeah, it, or it oh god, like, and you're like, oh, like, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what that was, because they're kids, they're kids on nuclear it's weapons, like my kids when they're fighting. They're like normally, something. this scene would be taking place between toddlers, and it's all fun and games until <laughs> one exactly of them goes. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> my kids will fight over something. Until my daughter, who's four, will either push the two year old brother or get in his face. And then he's just like, OK, I'm just biting you now like that <laughs> he's a biter. <laughs> he just bites. And then she's like, oh, my God, that's how <laughs> that goes. So that's what these dragons were. They were two toddlers fighting and <laughs> Vagar decided to eat the other one. The so the whole weapon. last son of Allison. We never knew. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is a little odd that like they don't really mention don't Daron mention at all. And I mean, okay, but Smaug is down. only like more memorable because Smaug talks, and I would be so Smaug, like I love no, the Smaug that. or the the dragons Smaug, that don't talk. Smaug got shot by a dude named Bard who just lived in Lake Town. Okay, he wasn't <laughs> even relevant to the Hobbit, and he killed the biggest, baddest MFE dragon in that entire. And I I really like that the dragons don't talk in Westeros. Yo, shout shout out to the Hobbit! What a great book. So good, such a good book. The book, though, the, the book. The, the first movie is good. not terrible. Also, like the fact that we got Sherlock and Watson as yes. Smaug and Bilbo, I will love it forever for giving us that. <laughs> the first Hobbit movie is good. I'll stand by that. It's I a pretty good first... adaptation. Yeah, and then the next the rest two... of the shit is you know bananas, but but it's t it... what people don't want to admit is that it's They're still fun. Pro... It's probably still in the top twenty fantasy movies of all time and it's also okay so Probably. you know I mean, how when you have after... shit like aragon that exists that's, that's what i'm saying but <laughs> when um when uh the new when star wars like episode seven eight nine you know rise of skywalker came out and everyone mm. was like you know the star wars prequels they weren't so bad so like Can rings of power to... is making yeah. people go you know the hobbit the movies they oh weren't straight up so bad the <laughs> but also yeah. like you made an entire trilogy out of the hobbit like you made the Battle of the Five Armies a movie when it was like a paragraph in a three hundred page book. Yeah, it's like I get making that a full battle scene, scene. Yeah, not a movie. Yeah, yeah. They should have made it one movie, Dum Dums. They could have even made it two. I'll give it two. They could have like, just okay. done a miniseries. Oh, yeah. oh! I gotta tell you guys this. I don't know if you know this, and this what? doesn't have a lot to do with uh, House of the Dragon, so I apologize. But did you know that HBO lost to Bezos for the bid for this Tolkien show? But I mean, you... that's there. I've definitely seen theories from people saying that Bezos does not care about making Rings of Power good. He just bought the rights to it, so no one else could do it. Did you know, Flex? HBO's plan. This is terrible. Uh -oh. um, they were going to redo the trilogy as a oh, yeah. TV show. Yeah. They were going to make Rings of Power. Yeah. I mean, I that's that was the plan anyway, but they didn't have the rights to do that anyway. Well, I guess HBO was going to go through all the hoops. That was their, that like the reason why they wanted to win this bid is that they could go and remake the trilogy. And I think that is such a bad that idea. That would have been really dumb. I know, but also, in fairness, so good. we know about all these like uh, <laughs> yeah. a Song of Ice and Fire shows that they wanted to make and then decided not to. Yeah. It's very possible that they would have, that they True. initially thought they wanted to do that. But along the way, they'd be like, mm, bad idea, but we have the rights. Let's do something not that with it and come up with something yeah. like House of the Dragon, which is really good. <laughs> yeah, I th I think that trilogy will be relevant and still very watchable in like 50 years. It always is. Yeah. It's so well done. It's you so mean Lord of the Rings? Yeah, yeah. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah, the Cameron's talking about it. This that that battle scene was so dumb. Why does it hurt so much? Because it's dog shit. <laughs> Dune worms in the orc army, elves just leaping over a shield wall form of dwarves for no reason. It was dumb. They should do that, and then they should make it one movie. 
for all 10 books yep i'm just trying to hurt you <laughs> why does it hurt so much <laughs> glocta isn't crippled he never even okay. mentions stairs spoilers for my channel's future videos but i was talking to a friend <laughs> in this conversation just like my rings of power video was because i talked to friends um i'm planning to do a what if amazon adapted first law video Here's a hot taste. They, no one should adapt First Law because you would have to make a lot of changes. I mean, I require if they whoever adapts First Law, I require all the dialogue to be dubbed over by Stephen Pacey. <laughs> like us, if you want to get the adaptation, just listen to Pacey and draw pictures. Like it'd be better off that way because they would have to change a lot of the blade itself. Oh, yeah. I think, and I don't, I don't really want them to. I just would rather it be its thing. You know, it's like Farseer. It's like they could try. But I'd rather not. Like, I would say that, like, it, it has the capacity to be an incredible adaptation. It also has the capacity to be shit. So, like, yeah. I, it's not unadaptable. Like, people said Dune was unadaptable, but along came That's Denis fair. Villeneuve. Um, so, and Joe Abercrombie's young, and he was a film editor before he was uh, mm -hmm. a writer. So, like, if he was involved with George R. R. Martin is, if the right studio had it, like, I think it could be very good. But it also could be dog shit. <laughs> And, and worse than being dog shit is actually just being uninteresting. Oh, it wouldn't be dog shit. It would be dog man shit. There you go. I like it. Solid. <laughs> Thank you. I think that it is worse to be like apathetic towards the show than it to be total dog shit. Like Truth Ooh. of the Seeker or whatever it's called is still like legendary because of how bad it was. Right. Legend of the Seeker. Um, yeah, oh, is that it? Legend of the Seeker. Like people talk about it constantly because it was so poor. But like but it was also it... like trying to be like legend, or it was like Xena the Warrior Princess, like Hercules. Mm -hmm. Like that's the kind of show that it was. And yeah. so I will say that like it is a lot more fun to watch Legend of the Seeker than Rings of Power because it was just like episodic episodes where there's some funny jokes and some wild action and some shenanigans and like it's just like a good time, even though it's kind of dumb. Whereas Rings of Power is not even a good time. <laughs> Yeah, and I think about things like um, like His Dark Materials. I don't know if you watch on HBO. I, I watched the first season. It's really good. Um, I good acting, started good... watching it, but I didn't. I feel like a lot of the changes they made from the books were just to like, stretch it out and make it a thing that it's not. Because they're like, trying to make it, oh, it needs to be like epic and dramatic. And I'm like, okay, but the book really isn't that way. I haven't read them yet. I'm actually, that's my uh, one of my number one things I'm going to read next year. I'm really excited about it. Like, it just felt uh, very dragged out. Like, I feel like they, it didn't need to be that dragged out. But, like, if you're a fan, right? And you're like, it was fine. Like, that's almost worse than if it's just dog shit. Because at least if it's dog shit, like, you can, like, get riled up about your hatred towards something. I mean, right? I have watched, like, cumulatively probably hundreds of hours of Rings of Power. I'm sorry, not Rings of Power. Rise of Skywalker rants. That's what I'm saying. Like, if it came out and it was just okay, you'd be like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. I mean, one of my mom's favorite sayings that I grew up with was love me or hate me, but don't ignore me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah, love or hate. And it, it's it's best not to be ignored. I, I think that that's pretty valid for adaptations, too. Like, if you're going to mess it up, you need to mess it up bad. Yeah. Well, then you become like the room, you know, like just like full on so bad that it's good. Yes. Yeah. I would like a 10 minute uninterrupted one take of Glock to climbing stairs and saying every obscenity in existence. I mean, I would be down with that. I mean, you know, like the intro to the episode should be with a black screen and just the sound of a cane tapping on stone. And then you maybe hear while it's still, while it's a black screen, you hear an internal monologue of why do I do this? Why do I do this? And then you finally cut to the guy struggling up the stairs. I feel like if they adapted the blade itself to screen the way that it is portrayed in the book it would get canceled after one season because of because of the you know you know the general complaints that people have about first law that mean you, yeah that mean you don't mind but i'm talking about we're not talking about us we're talking about the general audience the people who watch mass singer every tuesday or when, whatever it's on you know no, i, I mean, mean if they have enough like sex and violence in it people would watch it if you throw some glotka balls in there maybe they'll <laughs> I mean, you've got Giselle. He's good He's for a looker. Henry Cavill. Get Matt Smith go. to play Giselle. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Henry Cavill as uh, as Logan Nine Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Cavill or Cavill? I don't know. I think it's Cavill. 
I think it's Cavill. I think you're right. I I, I don't think HBO would ever uh, pick up First Law. I think it's too close to Game of Thrones for them. Yeah, no, I think whoever picked it up would be trying to rival, compete with. Which sucks because let's be honest, like the only television company that I trust is HBO. <laughs> I think but, um, Showtime would be okay. Showtime is a little underrated, yeah, because they've had like Ray Donovan and some other stuff. And they've also done like good. historical epics, you know, that mm -hmm. are all based on those Philippa Gregory books, which is like the same, you know, swords and like armies and like it's that type of thing. Yeah, it just makes you wonder like if something were on, let, let's say, you know, House of the Dragon had been on Showtime. Do you think as many people would have watched it? I don't think so, yeah. I don't think. I, I just don't. does have that cachet. Yeah, and they keep growing in subscribers where a lot, you know, like Netflix and people are losing uh, HBO, mm -hmm. ATT, Time, all of that has been growing. But at the same time, so. like Game of Thrones was a big risk when HBO did it the first time. And now we're like, well, obviously HBO would be the I mean, before they did Game of Thrones, I would never sure. have said HBO should do a fantasy show. Yeah, but I do think there's a competency that comes out of HBO for anything that they attempt. That's like it's at but least again, Showtime is also. Yeah, I know. I agree. I, I mean, way more. I would rather I mean, like Showtime did the Tudors, didn't they? Did they? I think they did. I think you might be right. I'm pretty anyway. sure. And the Tudors was a big hit. Was it? Mm hmm. And it had Henry Cavill in it. <laughs> That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. It was on Showtime. Interesting. And I mean, I could trust Netflix to do it because they've done a decent job with this. Kind yeah, of thing. I mean, I'll tell you this. I'd take Netflix over Amazon at this point. But, but also, like, so weirdly, I would have said that I would also trust Amazon before now because like Good Omens and The Boys, like though they have the Man in the High Castle, like they have done good stuff. Well, we're the only two people like Man in the High Castle. Oh, really? My it parents, was not. My parents also it was not well received unfortunately i i loved it i mean there was stuff that i didn't like but overall what a great premise i mean it's also I very it. i don't know if you've read the original by philip k dick i haven't no it's, i actually haven't read any philip k dick in yet. my opinion the show is better damn these comments gonna be rough <laughs> for those big like, philip k dick fans. at two minutes and 40 or two hours and 44 minutes and 50 seconds everyone balanced as soon as i brought up first law they're like ah oh, she's doing it here again. we go <laughs> She's doing her shtick. Yeah, but House of the Dragon. House an the absolute Dragon. success. I'm, yeah. I mean, I tried to go in with tempered expectations, being like, I'm, it'll be pretty good, I think. But, you know, like, you know, whatever. Just, just, it'll be fine. And every week, uh, even when it pissed me off, because it did piss me off, even so, most of the time, I was still sitting there being like, God, though, this is really good. Like, damn, y'all really knock it out of the park yeah it became i think after episode like three or four i was oh, like hey, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> i was like i no longer have to worry about this show nose diving you know and, and i think it's um which like i keep watching andor and being like one of these episodes it's gonna start sucking it's gonna start sucking it's gonna start it's sucking. Apparently. and so far i'm like this is really good so far which is why when i saw that thing about snow i was like i knew it i knew it was gonna start sucking <laughs> <laughs> there is like a um a uh, almost a tendency i guess you would call it of the online community and carnival row eight. amazon did carnival row and they're doing a season two so yeah i would have said amazon could do it but not no matter the, the, the carnival row is good the expanse is fucking amazing so good um i do think that there's uh uh a want to be the first people to say hot i told you so about house of the dragon which r resulted in online communities pointing at things that weren't big I'm deals it's the same me. as like the guy got dumped by a girl once so now i hate all women yeah it, 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 they they got fooled in season eight right they everyone felt like a fool um mm -hmm. and, and they want to be the first people to say hot, you I knew can't hurt me if i never love you that it's that and everyone's jumping the gun right oh rainy oh. that's it that's the D, &D moment and it's like it's really not there's nothing yeah. in this you know, there, there are things that we can nitpick and there's real criticisms for sure that aren't nitpicks. But at, at the end of the day, it was um, more than I even expected thinking it would be good. Um, and as far as numbers go, it was a massive success for HBO. Which Biggest thing since it's greatly. Because like, it's, I hate so often that like something good is produced, but then like, you know, with good books and stuff, they're like, oh, but it's not a bestseller. Everyone's reading garbage. Well, that's like, like Andor. I mean, Andor is apparently a great show and people aren't watching it, which at the same time, like I that's where I blame Disney for it, because like I'm yep. no, I don't blame people for being burned out on, on Star Wars content. Disney They're like Star Wars show. 
Like Andor well, is paying for the sins of previous bad shows. Well, I'm also going to say this, and this is probably not the popular opinion to say um, to Star Wars people. We all say we want something other than Skywalkers. We all say this. It's the only shit that works. But the okay, general but no. population. Uh-uh. Because like one of the first Star Wars shows to come out was The Mandalorian. And it was not a like canon character. It was just some Fair. guy Fair. walking yeah. around the desert. And people loved it. And then they crammed so much Star Wars that was bullshit down our throats that along comes Andor. And they're like, sorry, we're over it. We don't want this anymore. I mean, I agree with you to an extent, but I think everyone lost their minds when a certain character showed up in Mandalorian season two, though. But by the, I mean, Mandalorian was already very successful before that happened. Well, that's true. I'm, I'm not saying that it's impossible. I guess what I'm saying is, is that you're a lot more likely to see the general population get behind something because you have to remember, like, you know, I mean, I said this about Andor that it's like the Game of Thrones of Star Wars, like in terms of the tone and vibe of it is that it's highly yeah. political and complicated. It's not like. Yeah. shoot the bad guy oh no stormtroopers can't shoot me because they suck at shooting yeah it, it, it's a lot like the targaryens i saw people even like equate targaryens to skywalkers which makes me my head hurt but you know of course they did the targaryens because the targaryens are the most popular and they're going to give craig and stark a huge role like the starks are going to have a huge role because they're going to recognize that name brand uh, potential and you just have but to remember also, they are the ruling family like the crown was made yeah. about the ruling the family of england shaped... not about yeah some... the, the Targaryen shaped the world as we know it when you get to yes a song of ice and fire like it's also surreal to see like king's landing with targaryen banners uh, everywhere like as someone who watched you know what i mean like it's like holy yeah. shit that's crazy um but i i guess we just overestimate i think we overestimate the general viewers i really do you know, Which is why view. I am so pleasantly surprised that like House of the Dragon is popular because it's dense. It's not no. like super. It's not a casual watch. So the fact mm. that it's as popular as it is, I'm like, so we can have nice things. <laughs> My in-laws watched it and they were very confused, but they loved it. And I had to explain a couple things to them. Um, they were like, but Rhaenyra's queen, but Aegon already got crowned king. And I was like, yep, you got it. And they're like, but they can't both. And I'm like, yep, you're almost there. <laughs> Like you're almost there. <laughs> Sorry, just just picturing <laughs> your relatives being like, wait, they can't both wear the crown. <laughs> I mean, but, was... but I like that it's that and not like, but aren't they relatives and they're <laughs> <laughs> oh they're they can't West both be... <laughs> they're from West Virginia. So. Isn't that her uncle? <laughs> We like to keep it in the family. <laughs> I love all the memeing about like um, Damon and Rhaenyra's kids when they get married about how like their like father's mother, uncle, aunt just died. So now their mother and uncle can now marry and they can <laughs> like that situation. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, it's messy. I mean, a family tree is more of a family circle. Yes, a spiral. <laughs> Uh, oh they canceled Westworld and Raised by Wolves I watched the first season of Raised by Wolves and really loved it I haven't seen the second season <laughs> Apparently, the second weird season thing is about them canceling action. Westworld though is that like the latest season I think was done and like filmed and then they were just like hey we're not making the final season now and so I'm pretty sure the showrunner was just like gonna release what they were gonna end it on because it was like out of the blue HBO was just like yeah we're done with this <laughs> They lost almost four, uh, like a f like their viewers got cut by a fourth. That's because the show's not good anymore. But I, still, I agree. I think season one's one of the best seasons of television. Season one of Westworld is just one of the greatest shows Tremendous. I've ever seen. And season yeah. two was really cool, but also like started to get super convoluted and up its own ass. And then season three was just like, we're just doing a different show now. Yeah, I, I couldn't get behind two and three. Um, and Raised by Wolves, I watched season one, really liked it. And apparently season two, they went out in left field like crazy. But the season one was also pretty wild. Apparently season two is even more batshit. Alt Shift X covered it. And I just remember tuning into one of his live streams. I was like, I don't care if I get spoiled for it. And he was just like, yeah, so this fucking happened. Like He was like, what the fuck I just loved this? watching it for Travis Fimble's performance because he was. He's insane. getting cast in the Dune prequel. Yeah. The Sisterhood. Nice. That's gonna be dope. He's a good actor. That's he was always my favorite part awesome. of Vikings. Yeah, he is talented. Who was? Travis Bimmel. 
Oh yeah. Ragnar. That speaking that show sucked when he left too. I haven't seen it. I thought it sucked at first and then kind of kind of like the office that like kind of sucked after Steve Carell left and then kind of found its way again before the end. I mean, it found its way and was watchable, but it never got to like peak Vikings for me. No, but I did really like Ivar. (laughs) Ivar, yeah. He was fun to watch. I need to uh, watch Vikings. I haven't watched it yet. Watch Vikings. I heard it's really good. (laughs) Vikings is very good up until a certain thing happens and a character leaves the show. And then it's kind of like. Ivar. Eh, sure. Whatever. (laughs) It's like the last kingdom. All these people can have jobs in the first law adaptation. The last kingdom kind of did the same thing too, though, where it was super good for like, like I, I enjoyed it all the way through, but. There's a point in the show where it starts to feel very different. And it's because they literally fired, they either fired or the entire writing team like quit one way or another, like the entire writing team changed. And then it like tonally started feeling different, like plot choices started getting like really convenient. Like the show started like characters were acting different. And it was because they literally changed the entire writing staff. I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. Like it was still at good, least but... that happened on like Game of Thrones where it was the same writers and they <laughs> yeah. just were like <laughs> they were just dog shit. <laughs> they only they could have just handed it over. I don't know if you ever got if you guys ever watched Fringe, which I love. Mm-hmm. I did not. But like they just suddenly found out they were getting canceled. So the last season is like half the number of episodes and it just goes completely <laughs> insane. insane. <laughs> and you're just like, was this the end game plot you had no, planned for the next five seasons? It. And you're like, we're doing it now. <laughs> They just fit it in. So, season two, we have to wait till 2024. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, a bit of a kick in the taint. Not great. <laughs> I'm sorry, a what? It's okay. We get Wheel of Time season two before oh, then. God. Yay. What if it's good? It's not going to be, but sure. Two? It's not going to be good. I bet it'll be better than Rings of Power. I fully believe Rafe found the error in his ways and will actually adapt any of the oh. material yes uh-huh. also black sales is good so stars mm-hmm. could do first law i would trust stars yeah I've, I, yeah I've heard that that show is actually really great it is i would say it's, it's a bit of a slow start like it doesn't hook yeah. me right away it took me a few episodes but the toby stevens the guy that plays like the main the main pirate he's really really good isn't he's maggie Jorah smith's son show? Isn't Jorah on Black Sails? Is he? I think so. I think so. Mm, It'll Jorah the Explorer. (laughs) But Toby Stevens is Maggie Smith's son. I don't know what that means. Maggie Smith? McGonagall? Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Great. (laughs) So now I know you're super excited about Black Sails because of that information. (laughs) Thank you. That was quite the sales pitch because McGonagall's son is on it. I mean, he's a pretty good looking man. He's a good actor. I just feel like usually people know who that is right away and are like, oh, that's crazy. Instead of like crickets. (laughs) Not us. Who's Dame Maggie Smith? (laughs) Oh. Okay. Anyway. Well, it is late. We've been talking. Okay, we have to talk for four more minutes. So it's a perfect three hours. (sighs) Give us some deep cuts, Jimmy. <laughs> I, got, I got I got absolutely nothing. Tell us about <laughs> lemon trees and Dorn. Absolutely. Uh, I find favorite episode. Oh, eight for sure. Why? Viserys' walk. Oh, hey, did you guys like when Damon got his head cut off? I saw some people hated it. Yeah, because Damon was sick of shit. I mean, I felt about it like it was like another like four spectacle doesn't make sense. Like the king just gave past sentence and that is not what the king said to do. And you can't just chop people's heads off. I don't care what era this is. That's not but a thing you, you can just do. But you can because it's Damon and you know he has a soft spot for Damon. And he was he was basically like, here's the rope. Please hang yourself. And he was like, all right, I'm going to do it. Bastards. Is wishing. Like it didn't bother me as much as Kristen killing Joffrey because Damon is a prince and the brother yeah. of the king. But it was still like, you can't. I, I know you say back in the day, but like, no, you can't just chop people's heads off and no one says or does anything. <laughs> you can in that instance because he was talking shit about the royal family to their faces. And Damon was like, I'm done with you. 
hit him with that whirlwind fucking sword. Oh man. I mean, at the very least, I thought it was sick. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I did. I it was enjoyable as a moment because like, as soon as that happened, my brother and I were both like, he didn't even get his tongue cut. And then Damon goes, he can keep his tongue. And we we're like, mm, okay. Well, they directly answered <laughs> what we just said. Go. Touché, sir. <laughs> Touché. So Damon heard us. We felt seen. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty brutal. That Valerian steel, huh? It was, it was so cartoonish. It felt like something out of a Tarantino movie. I think that yeah. might be why I liked it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it just like didn't fit the tone of the show. Why not? I don't know. I don't I'm not saying the killing didn't. I mean, the killing was a little annoying, but I mean that like cartoonish perfect slice where you can see the tongue still like that. It was a sharp sword, like, man. A comic book. It's moment. a Valerian steel. It's, just, it's magical. Apparently. Also, a really great scene that's really subtle is whenever Viserys uh, air for a day and Viserys and Damon are arguing and Viserys like rips Blackfire and switches his grip on the sword. Do you guys remember that? It's like when Damon mm -hmm. kind of steps forward. It's pretty sick. He's also just pissed. That was like one of the few times Viserys is just like legit angry. Yeah, anytime those two interacted on screen, it was money. Yeah. I was going to say like, uh, I feel like I was prepared to quote Patrick Rothfuss for something else, but like wise man's fear is that like there's two what, things that a wise man fears and um, one of the things is like the anger of a, of a calm man or of a quiet man or something, which like you know, this area is getting angry. Yeah. And, and feet. The other one of the feet. <laughs> but the actual quote that I thought I would quote much sooner um, is the one that I always quote. And I, I feel like at this point, Patrick Rothfuss owes me money. <laughs> it's uh, to love something because it's easy. That's like putting pe a penny in your pocket. But to love something despite to know the flaws and love them too. That is rare and pure and perfect. And... We know there's flaws in House of the Dragon. So Damon is rare and pure and perfect. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my perfect princeling. He was until he choked Rhaenyra. Slay. God. Slay. So, so toxic. <laughs> queen. <laughs> I love that that scene, though. He choked her and she still came out on top. She was like, he didn't tell you. He didn't fucking tell you I'm the queen. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that, too. That's another reason why the prophecy, you know, is used just further than just being like hey guys yeah. you get it because in that scene yeah yes he choked her but he didn't win that mm -hmm. argument no we hit three hours <laughs> yes. okay bye <laughs> well so thanks sorry. for coming on and uh thanks for I having guess i'll me. talk to you in two years when house of the dragon season two is. can't wait never before that never. we are not allowed to speak now until <laughs> house of the dragon season two airs correct that is how these friendships work. Yeah. That's, how my, that's what my contract says. <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> okay. Thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs>